it is the best in the world at the biggest stage in the world for stock car racing. It's NASCAR Cup Series racing from Daytona, the Coke Zero Sugar 400. Final race of the regular season, meaning the final opportunity for someone to join this list or for those that are on it already to stay on it. Ryan Blaney, Martin Shrex Jr., the only two drivers that are still able to get in based on points, but a win could advance 13 drivers and lock them in to the playoffs. Cars are rolling around the track already. Pre-race ceremonies have taken place and want to take a look at this morning's Coke Zero Sugar starting grid. That will go on the left side of the screen. Pinkert Motorsports drivers making up row number one. Let's bring in Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Burton, both drivers that have won at this racetrack, this famed hallowed ground here at Daytona International Speedway. Guys, we know that things get aggressive at the end of the race, but Junior, are we going to see that throughout the entire race? Well, we've seen it here before. We saw it in the Xfinity race this weekend, and we've seen it in the past at Daytona and Talladega this year. With this car, every time they've came to the finish line, we've had cars crashing uh, at the end of these races. Uh, we just don't know really how they're going to race in stage one, stage two. Will that intensity be there the entire day? At Talladega it was. I was really shocked with how hard these guys raced from the drop of the green flag all the way through. This is a different race though, a lot of different agendas. We really don't know exactly how intense that pack's going to be. I think all those wrecks make this race very difficult for Ryan Blaney to navigate himself through. He has a 25 point advantage on Martin Truex. How do you race this race? Do you go get in the middle of that? Do you ride back a little bit? I think that this is a very difficult decision for Ryan Blaney. He's an aggressive driver. He wants to be in the front no matter what. But is that in his best interest early in the race? He's going to have to make that decision as things are happening around him. Bring in our crew chief, Steve Latart. Junior just said it, this is a different race. It was supposed <laughs> to be a night race. We're 14 hours later. How different is it calling the race now in the morning? Well, when the lights come on, the grip goes up. So last night, this racetrack would have had a ton of grips. Just how fast can you set your car up to be? Overall speed is what mattered. It may still be that case today, but I have anxiety. I don't know. It's now a day race in the middle of the summer. We have never done that with this new next gen car, right? Back in February, it was cooler. There was grip. We're now 25 races later. Will these cars handle? One thing we will know, the drivers will let us know if they don't handle well enough. But as a crew chief, I'm nervous. Did I make all the right choices or will I have to make big adjustments early to get the grip back to my driver? Rain pushed this race to a morning Sunday race from a Saturday night race. And did that affect the 47, Parker Kligerman? It seemed like they were on pit road a little bit longer than normal. Right, Rick, and the team went in action quickly when Ricky Stenhouse got in the car because his radio wasn't working. So what they do, they changed the entire radio harness. You see here, they got it zip tied in there, put a new radio harness. It now works. He came on the radio and thanked his boys so he can go out there and try to win this race and get in the playoffs. All right, Steve. Uh, let's break this one down as far as stages. Yeah, 160 laps, 400 miles, first stage, 35 laps. You can run that on fuel, not an issue. Then 60 laps, and then another stage of 65 laps. Fuel window just shy of 50. So pit stops in both stage two and stage three will be required. Two by two, the field. Getting ready to get the green flag for the final race of the regular season. The regular season champion already decided. It's the guy who's driving the number nine on the outside of row one. But how will he do in this one? He's won the most races. Green flag underway. And Larson in the five has jumped out to an early lead. A lot of pushing and shoving to try to get up to the front and track position key here at Daytona. Larson got out there a little too far. Dropped back. That outside line sliding backwards just a little bit. They'll get that momentum going eventually, but really organized on the bottom. You see bumper to bumper. First four cars working well together. This is a 10 a.m. wake up call right here, Rick. Welcome to 200 miles an hour. No better way to wake up. For decades, they ran this race in the morning. A lot of learning going on right now. There's, there was no practice. No qualifying. First time the cars have been on track. Drivers trying to understand what their car does well and what it doesn't do well. This track was repaved years ago, had a lot of grip, really haven't had any issues with handling, especially running the race at night. But in the Xfinity race, tons of drivers complaining about balance, about the cars being very, very loose. We had a lot of guys spin out without contact. Be interesting to see if that affects the cup cars today. In front of the pack right here, you saw Joey Logano in that yellow car. He left the bottom just a little bit. 
And Christopher Bell behind him was looking to try to take that spot from him. Great angle here from the A-Shock Energy Cam. See, now Logano's got that thing pinned on the bottom much better, not giving Christopher Bell a place to go. About the first eight cars on a single file line on the inside, then you got double file back there with Kyle Larson leading that outside line. Yeah, Suarez behind him trying to bring that outside line up. You see the momentum starting to build. Right on the Coca-Cola Zero Sugar camera with Daniel Suarez on the roof. What Daniel wants to be able to do right here down the back straightaway is get to that rear bumper of Kyle Larson. If he could get to it and push him down the back straightaway, it would accelerate them. Slowly but surely, they're inching up car after car, all the way up inside the fourth place car, Kevin Harvick. Right now, the 22, Joey Logano, pushing the nine of Chase Elliott on that bottom line. It has moved ahead by three car links, now four car links. Big push Harvick coming from the nine out there. Alongside the 20 car here, still working. See Logano how high up he is. He's trying to get to the right rear quarter panel on that nine to push him. But he keeps exposing that bottom. Eventually, Chris Abrell is going to take it from him. Steve, in the past, these cars have had to peek out to get a little bit of air into the radiator to cool them off. Same situation now, or can they stay locked up for numerous laps? No, they can't stay locked up, so the inlet to the radiators is the same location, but the other little nuance is it's also the inlet to the engine. So when you pull up really, really tight, you actually start to lose a little horsepower, which can hurt. Kyle Busch, we talk about agendas and strategies. I think this is a planned agenda. You see the hand out the window. Nope. You gentlemen go ahead. Five laps into this race, he's going to fall back to a comfortable distance. With the draft, he has no problem keeping up with only 30 laps to load going to stage. He just doesn't see the reason to have the risk. You see right there, the hood flap, that's all air, right? As you pull up into that wake, you know, the air pressure goes away and it pulls those hood flaps up. There it is again. Big oh, bump there. Man. Looks like Larson had to maybe get out of the gas a little bit. Suarez with a big hit. And those big hits really often don't send you anywhere. It's kind of that, you got to ease up to the back bumper of that car and barely connect and then start pushing, then drop the hammer and start shoving forward and driving both cars in the right direction. If you go up there and pop somebody, both cars just kind of stop. Doesn't really send the guy out front anywhere. And Jeff, is this a situation where the five might not be a good car to be leading? He might be a good pushing car, but that back, that high line is not moving at all. Now they're six, seven, eight car lengths back. Well, I would think that five car is a good car as far as speed. It's just sometimes the bottom lane works better than the than the top lane. We talked about it as soon as they dropped a the green flag. There's a lot that you're gonna learn today. And not every race is the same. It changes, the energy changes. You see now, as they enter the corner, you see a little bit of a run, and that's what has to happen. On that outside line, you hope to be able to kind of maintain a part of the racetrack, but then gain some advantages than others, and then just foot by foot, get yourself back to the front. See the telemetry up to 190 miles an hour for Larson leading that outside line. Logano second in line on the inside. Following Chase Elliott, Logano, big news this last week. He, ser he signed a multi-year long-term deal with Penske. That now matches what Ryan Blaney has done. So two of the three in the Penske organization with long-term deals as we ride along in the advanced auto parts Number 12 of Blaney. They got a line on the top there forming out on three wide here. That should slow everybody down. Anybody that's three wide, they're going to be side drafting off each other whether they're trying to or not. It's going to kind of drag the cars down a little bit. Shot so cool right there. Looking through the right rear corner of the spoiler. Looking forward. See how much he's out of the gas right here. You know, a little bit of part of throttle on corner entry. I assume some of that is really just to make sure his car is nice and secure. I would assume corner entry is where the handling would be. Entry and exit, really, would be the handling where would be the biggest issue when you're in that middle lane. Yeah, that, Steve. And you can see, oh, a little bit of contact there. Oh, there's four wide here. The pusher in the middle. Larson dropping back here. He's Chris in the draft. There's not time to, the no time to say Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> no time for it. 
Ryan Blaney, we talked about him at the start of the show, what he has at stake, and he is in the middle of this chaos. Three wide. You know he's nervous right now. He's an aggressive driver. He wants to be in the middle of that, but a wreck early could really be detrimental to his playoff hopes. You can see what three wide has done. It's all these guys have faded back outside the top 10. So, so the interesting one to me is Kyle Busch, right? So he lifts weighs everybody by, and you see on the big replay right there of four wide, if you look at the last car in that third lane, it is Kyle Busch. He's now right up in the mess again. Sometimes he can't help himself. Yeah, contact with the 17 and the five. Both kind of fighting for the same piece of real estate. Junior, I mentioned earlier about aggressive driving and, and how aggressive are you early on in a race. Does the potential for inclement weather, does that change your aggressiveness? Not really until you get closer to halfway. I think, you know, you want, if you have weather in the area, you want your, your crew chief to kind of keep you understanding what lap it is. Because it's raining yeah. in turn one and two. It sure is. And this track's so big, it can just start pouring on one end. That's quite a bit of rain right there in turn one and two, and it'd be completely dry on the other. Riding along with the leaf home, the 31 of Haley. You see Haley, he had it up on that third lane. Kind of letting everybody go, going to get in line. It's a fight to the bottom. Big single file in around the bottom, Rick. Shane Shelley and Joey Logano, Christopher Bell, Kevin Harvick, Michael McDowell, the top five here at Daytona. NASCAR Cup Series from Daytona. The Coke Zero Sugar 400. Well, NASCAR Drive, that's your live race day companion. You can always get access to high definition in car cameras and current position trackers, as well as pit stop data. All you have to do is visit NASCAR.com slash driver. You can download the NASCAR mobile app. And different agendas. The uh, 12. Going down. Up. 
220. It's going down. The water temp 220. Getting a little hot, it sounds like. Water temp was way high. Talking about that temperature coming down, but the pace on this car is concerning. We well, listen to it. Yeah, that yeah. sound right. Yep. Sounds like a, some sort of issue. Looks like there's some smoke out that right side pipe right there. So yeah, water's just going down. Water's Two going down. Okay, so water's going down either because air is going through the or the grill or the engine failure has got in an area where the water's leaving the vehicle. Right, yeah. Steve, and, and they're coming directly to pit road, and that's what Cliff Daniels is thinking that something has uh, gone awry permanently with the five engine. So the water temperature just keeps going down. Now it's under 200, Steve. So what does that tell you? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it will cool very quickly because the you know grill's completely open, running by yourself. But but the sound of it, I'm going with the fact that there's some sort of break internally that's probably leaking water out through the exhaust. Unfortunately for the two of Austin Cindric, Jeff, he was kind of behind the five car and nowhere to go. And for that reason, he's way behind the pack. There's absolutely nothing he could have done. He was pushing, trying to push the five car, and he just got drugged to the back trying to keep from being in a wreck. And now look how far behind he is. And with this car, if you become the last car in this pack, you can lose the draft. And that has happened. And now Austin Cindric has to hope that they don't come all the way back around and lap him. There's really nothing he can do is stay, stay wide open in the gas and hope he doesn't get lapped. He's got 18 laps and he's gonna have to stay out on the racetrack and hope for that. The possibility of a caution is the only thing that would catch him back up right now. Parker. He's me right on board here with Ryan Blaney. I just wanna point out some masterful moves he's made here early on this race, considering that obviously he has to score stage points in this race that he battles Martin Truex to make it in the playoffs. He was around 22nd place on the bottom when the top lane formed up. He chose not to move. He then stuck to the bottom. That got him to about the top 15. And then as things settled down, he was one of the first cars back up the top lane and has now driven himself into the top 10. Some really smart moves by Ryan Blaney, Marty. The Toyota on board will give us the views for Bubba Wallace today, currently in the 16th position. He has been committed to that higher line. It's crazy to think that over 8,000 miles of racing over 17 or 27 weeks comes down to one race for Bubba Wallace but he told me before the race we shouldn't even be in this position we've given away so many races this year but when it comes to my confidence this is top two for me Dave Burns Chase Elliott still up front but look at that push coming for Logano oh it can happen at any time here at Daytona and it's getting good up here in front again if you look on the inside line though back in the two four six position now is the red and black number 19 of Martin Truex Jr. remember two surefire ways to make it to the playoffs end the day with more points than Ryan Blaney or win the race. Both tall tasks here, but Truex, for his part, has moved from a 13th starting position all the way up to six. It was a 25-point deficit that Martin Truex Jr. had starting the race, but the 12 of Ryan Blaney right there almost reach out and touch the 19. So those two are staying close to each other. This outside line's making some good headway, Rick. Look at this 11 car of Denny Hamlin. He was leading it. Eric Jones jumped up in front of him. So now Denny's going to have to try to push Eric forward. And they're making a little progress. You see very slowly. But we have yet to see this outside line get up there and actually battle, take the lead, be able to move up, move forward and take the lead. Not enough momentum just yet to really trust it. So a lot of guys are watching this. A lot of guys are still weary about jumping in that outside line. Five headed to the garage after engine issues. It seems as though uh, that end of the day for potentially the five of Kyle Larson yep. locked into the playoffs, though. The other thing that's helping this inside line is Joey Logano being the pusher of the lead car. Joey Logano is one of the most aggressive pushers in the, in the series. He is always going to get to that back bumper and push you forward. Look at this outside lane. Talk about pushing. Denny Hamlin. Giving Eric Jones a big push. Now he's alongside that 22. Now that's going to take some energy out of that 22. It's not going to be as easy for him to get up there and push Chase Elliott now that they're side by side. That's what that's what that 43 car needs to do right now with Eric Jones. He needs to take advantage of that side draft. And now look at what's happened. It's a completely new game now. Are you surprised Chase Elliott didn't jump out in front of him? Right, taking up a little. It's a little early. I mean, it's, you know, you've got some exceptionally aggressive drivers, but a little early to be bought making that block at the speed that Eric Jones had coming at him. Big push here. There's a little connection from both cars. <laughs> Joey is trying his hardest 
to get that nine car back up front. And you see he's offset to the right. The reason he's doing that is because if he pushed somebody on the left rear quarter panel, it can easily spin them out. If you push them on the right rear, it's much less likely, Dave, for them to go get spinning around. And as fans know, the 43 car there on the outside, he's one of the 13 drivers that must win, can win, and advance to the playoffs starting next week at Darlington. So there goes Jones to the lead. Crew Chief Dave Ellens was very confident when he talked about the race car and also his driver's willingness to be aggressive when necessary, but patient when necessary. I'd say with the weather today, guys, let's be aggressive early. Left, lower left corner of your screen. You see the drivers that must win to get into playoffs. Well, Eric Jones right now, Surging ahead, trying to make his way into the playoffs. season kicks off next Thursday on September 8th on NBC and Peacock with the Bills visiting the Super Bowl champion Rams. Then on Sunday Night Football, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers take on the Cowboys. Looking down on this two and a half mile super speedway, it's still Chase Elliott on that inside line with the help of Joey Logano. Elliott in the nine, Logano in the 22, and Christopher Bell in the 20, keeping that inside line pretty tight. Eric Jones Looks like the car is a handful, Steve. He's been kind of all over the place with Denny Hamlin pushing him. Yeah, there's a couple times that he's been very high off turn two, which is surprising as the lead car in the pack, you have the most air. One time I thought Denny could take a three wide, chose not to this early in the race. But you wonder with 10 to go, now nine to go in this stage, if Denny will continue to be that patient. Parker, I believe you've caught up with the driver of the five, Kyle Larson, difficult for the regular season points uh, for the driver of the five. Right, Rick, we saw that issue where he pulled to the side, was talking about the engine water temp. So what was the issue here? And did you have any indication that it was failing? Uh, I guess it was the timing belt maybe or something like that. So uh, I didn't really have much of an indication. So I'm sure they'll dig through the data and, and see if it was happening earlier than when it really uh, let go there. So um, bummer. Um, I'm sure we'll drop a few spots in the points. So that'll, that'll hurt for the playoffs. But um, either way, yeah. 
guess there's one positive. I didn't get caught up in a crash, so um, you know, we're safe and uh, get to go go race next week and, and uh, get our playoffs started. Unfortunate for the five car, Rick. Yeah, at end of the regular season, the top ten in the regular season points all get playoff points based upon where they are. So we know that Chase Elliott has won the regular season championship. He's going to get 15 playoff points, second in the regular season points they get 10 playoff points so those 10 playoff points are huge as you rank the drivers to start the playoffs marty rick should we be surprised michael mcdowell up here in the top 10 he is one of those drivers if he wins today he would be in the playoffs former daytona 500 winner almost got the win at watkins Glen last week i asked him why are you so successful at super speedway races he said i'm willing to say no moss i'm willing to be aggressive when i have I'm also willing to say the pack energy does not feel right to me. I'm willing to jump out of the pack, but right now he feels pretty good keeping it up there close to the top ten right now. Michael always just does a nice job of managing it. There's something about it you can kind of feel. Um, and I think they're around these stage ends. You know, seven to go. You saw that big move by the 43 and the 11 to take control. Just another side note, we mentioned how the two of Austin Cedric lost the draft when the five had their engine issue. Well, now he is only basically about nine seconds in front of the pack. So in the next two laps, they will lap, lap Austin Sindrick. Two things, guys, bad for Sindrick, but now all this two wide in the pack instantly becomes three wide. Yeah, it really does. And we already, we've seen the energy change. Look at that inside line. Once Eric Jones, Denny Hamlin, Blaney, once they got clear of that inside lane, they hung a left. And now they went to the bottom and now they are driving the energy on that bottom lane, Dave, as the outside's trying to recover. And Denny Hamlin in second there in the purple and white FedEx car, the number 11, three-time Daytona 500 winner. And why has he been so good at it? Chris Gabehart, his crew chief, tells me he reacts to the situation instead of trying to control all the chaos all day long. And when you think about what Denny's done starting 19th all the way up to this position, yeah, he's reacted quickly to each and every situation so far as we come to the end of the stage. Well, Chase Elliott just jumped to the outside. He's trying to be the leader of that outside lane. Alex Bowman could not go with him. He got shoved up the racetrack. Now he is stuck by himself completely three wide on the outside. He's going to the back. And it's going to be four wide here if the two doesn't get up to speed or get somebody to help him. Maybe Alex Bowman is going to get behind him and help him stay at pace here. Look at that front two there. Chase Elliott around the outside. Kind of flip flop. What we saw earlier. Oh, oh three. three. And away goes Spin the 11, out. the 20 also around. Ryan Blaney caught up in this in the 12. Right here, they're wrecking. Drew yeah, they're to work. Nothing's Drew gonna Drew hit you here. barely working his way through there. Did Blaney get damage here? Oh. Yes, oh, yes. yes. Damage to the 12 of Ryan Blaney. The steering wheel is 180 degrees. Oh, no, 180 degrees. Oh, that means, guys, look at the right front corner. Oh, that it's means turned he's turned in and not rolling, Jeff. Yeah, 180 degrees means the steering wheel is turned. The front tires are not aiming where they needed to aim. That means there's damage. How much damage, Steve? That's the question. Is this repairable? We won't know until he gets the pit road. Yeah, we'll see if it's just a tow link, which is a simple repair for the front, but or for the rear. But in the front, much more complicated because of the way the steering works. Whatever is broken on the right front, you know, is repairable. The question is, is it repairable in six minutes? Right. I got to come see you this time. Right here, he's going to come to the right sticking. front, sticking yeah. out. Let's take a look at this wreck, though, and see how this damage occurred. 11 cars pushing the 43, just gets him loose. And then he gets very loose. Just chaos behind him. Guys trying to check up. And when you check up, you get ran into. Second up, they have high go around it. Wow. Drex drives all through this. Look at the 19 there on the right side of the screen. He works his way through all of this, I believe, without any issues. Junior, he believes only flat spotting the tires, only tire damage on the 19. Again, the Good. two drivers fighting for points, Ryan Blaney, Martin Shrex Jr., and Blaney with damage to his car. Yeah, but then we got to remember, though, that with Blaney came in with a 25-point lead, so now Truex still has to find those points. No, this will be a great view. Let's take a look from Blaney's seat. Really appreciate that. Yes, Ed Mark's doing a good here. Still pushing in front. Still pushing in front. Still trying to check out. Come low. Come low. Come low. Come up. Keep going. Keep going. High, high, high. Issues with the 43 when he was out front of the top lane, guys. You know, I thought Danny kind of pushed him loose, but right now, Boyd with Blaney, it seems like they all stack up. I don't know if the 43 had a handling issue and just had to breathe it, and Danny was just too close and they all couldn't react, or if it was a push that turned him sideways, but it definitely started with some sort of stack up in the bottom lane. 
We kind of saw some similar things in a Daytona 500 with with uh, Harrison Burton, Brad Keselowski just pushing in the corner. Yes, we are late in the tire run. The tires are worn out. Cars are slicker. Handling's an issue. We've seen the 43 car chase in the back of his car a little bit. Denny pushed him a little bit as they're, as they're trying to transition off of two. Denny sees he gets him loose. Denny checks up. The 12 pops the 11. Turns him down across the apron. Dave. And there is Eric Jones coming in. He'll get right side Goodyear tires and a fill of fuel. He'll take all four here and they'll fill it up as we have three to go in the stage, Marty. Michael McDowell, Bubba Wallace also on pit road getting four fresh Goodyear tires here. A lot of guys saying they're a little more free than they expected to be. Bubba kind of left by uh, stall maybe a little bit early. They wanted him to stay just a bit longer, but they did certainly get enough fuel here with three to go in stage one. So the decision here, all these cars you see on pit road, they're, they're either, they're agendas. Let's talk agendas. They're thinking they have to either win the race or they don't care about the stage points. On the racetrack though, Chase Elliott leads. Mark Trex Jr. trying to get those points to pass this man, Ryan Blaney. All right, we knew there'd be wrecks in Daytona. Look right here, the 11 car gets into the back of the 43, but let's see what happens. 43 cars moving around, it's wide open. He lifted right there just a little bit as he got, just started to get a little bit loose. The 11 got into the back of him. Ryan Blaney could not react quick enough. Ryan Blaney and many others behind him got in this wreck. Well, Ryan Blaney is on pit road trying to beat the damaged vehicle clock, trying to get off pit road. He'll do it. We'll see if he can maintain minimum speed to reset that clock on the bottom of the screen. Truex Jr. stays on the racetrack, currently fourth. A one lap shootout for the end of the stage. Playoff points are important for Chase Elliott leading, but for Truex, it's all about just scoring points. He has to pass Blaney because therefore, if we have a new winner, you don't want to be the bottom between Blaney and Truex. So a big one lap shootout for Truex there in the second row. Huge playoff implications as we get ready for the restart and it'll be a one lap shootout as we thank Geico once again for our aerial coverage. It's a great shot of this field here at Daytona back up through the gears they go one lap. 
till the end of stage one. It'll be important for this 19 car to get in the back of the 22 and push him for as long as he can. That inside line traditionally does really well on restarts. Good job so far. Get that 22 out front. Now 22 down to the bottom. Yeah, now the car's on the bottom. Now they're hooked up. But Legato, great job going to the bottom. Now Truex hopes to get a great shove from Bubba Wallace in the 23. But right now, the 9 is pushing the 22 way out front. As a matter of fact, he's going to take the lead. He pushed the 22 out front, then decided to try for the lead. Now what will the 19 do as they come through 3 and 4 for the final time here in stage 1? The 22 right in the middle. He's going to block either lane, and the 22 is going to win stage 1. Truex looks like he's going to run in the fifth position. So a few points for Martin Truex Jr. That's good. Playoff point for Joey Logano. They're loving that, Rick. Fill that bucket. Playoff point so important here at the end of the regular season. Yeah, unfortunately, Brad Keselowski no longer in the race. That accident caught him. It is the 22 of Logano. Aggression early here at Daytona. Pit Road, they come. Parker. Joey Logano will be the first here to get to his box. He just said he was a little too free inside that 22 car. We saw a lot of cars struggling in the handling there. He was one of them. They're going to make an eight pressure adjustment in four Goodyear tires, Dave. Six stage points for Martin Truex Jr. Crucial as he battles Blaney, who was involved in the wreck. He'll get four Goodyear tires here and Sunoco fuel to go through to the next stage. Marty. Chase Elliott led 28 laps of stage one, but was not happy with his final restart, saying, leave it to me, leave it to me. Alan Gutson tried to reassure him. 21 has to work his way around the nine car for fresh Goodyear tires. Handling terrific, though, for Chase Elliott. Race off pit road. Chase Elliott grabbing six spots. Uh, not changing tires there on that run on pit road. NASCAR on CNBC is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford proud. Little Caesars, try our large classic now with 33% more pepperoni. And 
Start saving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. Credit One Bank and American Express are giving you the opportunity of a lifetime for your chance to win tickets to the Daytona 500 for 25 years. And the fans here enjoying this Sunday morning racing and one person not enjoying it as much as they were at the start of this race is the driver of the 20, Christopher Bell Parker's with him. Right, Rick, and you just released from the infield care center involved in that accident just before the end of stage one. Chris, what do you see from your point of view? Yeah, I don't know. It looked like the uh, the 43 just got a little bit loose, um, and then the rest of it was, you know, long for the ride, but really disappointed for, yeah, looking at it, just a stack up. Normal speedway race. Disappointed for our group. You know, this Ream car was uh, obviously competitive, started up front, was able to stay up there, and go on to uh, start the playoffs next week. Seen some really aggressive racing out there. Is that, was it as aggressive from inside the car? I mean, there's just moments, you know, whenever you get out front and we were single file, everyone was taking it easy, and then the top lane starts going and you got to start pushing to keep up. So uh, just a product of what Daytona and Talladega and now Atlanta is today. Super Speedway racing, guys. Dave. And the 19 Martin Truex Jr. among those who came to pit road now to top off the fuel. Uh, the comment to Martin was, we're in the back anyway, meaning that a lot of cars had pitted before them. Uh, and so when they came down pit road, they were kind of near the back anyhow. So Truex will now have a full tank of Sunoco fuel. Steve, how far would you like to take that into the second stage here? Well, 56 laps to go. You think you could run probably 46, 48 laps. So now it's a really quick, short fill at some point. That would be how this 19 gets her track position back, I assume. Plus, with the 18 car behind him had a penalty of removing equipment or running over equipment. So now he's back there with the teammate, Marty. And you see Chase Elliott also among those cars who topped off Steve. Alan Gustafson making that same exact call. So, yeah, Alan saying, hey, I want to make the next stop as short as I possibly can. How much would that even one lap under caution by them, Steve, on the racetrack under green? Well, it all adds up. It's not a whole lot, um, but, you know, tenths of a second matter on pit road. Plus, you know, you wonder if maybe that got a little bit crazy at the end. And now that there's some guys eliminated, if they want to ride around the back, Parker. 
Steve, just a shout out to Jonathan Hasser, the crew chief on this 12 team, who's expertly guided this team through a very high pressure scenario, though, after that crash. They were able to fix the right front. They went two laps down. They got off the DVP. He had to, Blaney had to do that on left side tires that are flat spotted. They've changed those tires. They fixed the toe, and this may just keep them in a shot for the playoffs. You see that badly bruised number 12 car. Yeah, that one lap shootout got the 12 off that damage vehicle policy. Field approaching the Geico restart zone as we're getting underway now with stage two for Daytona. Completely different look to the front of the field now. Yeah, we got a lot, of, a lot of players up there. Bubba Wallace pitching out front. A little side draft though from Corey LaJoy on the inside. Stenhouse trying to get the back bumper of that seven car on the inside to be able to push him clear. Eric Jones still on the outside line. And behind that, Joey Logano made it three wide into turn one, trying to lead that outside line. And the eight of Tyler Reddick saw that coming and he jumped up in front of it. Now the 48, a moment, he's trying to lead that outside line. Mike McDowell jumps up in the outside line as well, right behind the 43 car of Eric Jones. That's going to push that line forward. Bubba Wallace leads them right here. The inside line's trying to organize. Not enough cars down there, Jeff. A little bit of space between them. That outside line all lined up, bumper to bumper to bumper. Or the joy in house on the inside, struggling right now to keep pace, and you see them dropping back. You want to keep your eyes on the 43 of Jones, remember ill handling car and right now running up here in the second spot as that outside line making a run. Here comes Christopher Busher in the 17. Dave. And Rick, the driver of the 43, confirmed to his team before that pit stop, very, very loose. So they made a big adjustment there to try to keep Eric in this show and on his way to the playoffs if he can win this race. A lot of times you'll get loose in the super speedway races being the lead car like the 43 was. You got a lot of air on the nose. You got a car behind you taking all the air off the back of the car and lifting the air off the rear spoiler. There he goes again. Eric Jones out front of the 43. And the other thing is, as all these cars are three wide, the cars do not drive as well. And the track temp, it's coming up. Sun's out. Track temps keep inching up higher and higher and higher. That's going to make the handling worse. It's pretty intense right here. Stage two, and we're three wide in the third row. All the way back. And I think it's a product of all the drivers that are up there. All these guys are win and get in the playoffs. And you see on the bottom of the left screen or the left side of your screen, playoff bubble. With Eric Jones leading, that knocks Truex out. And as soon as he's not leading, somebody who's not a new winner potentially, that lets those two points drivers back in. And that's really because of this remarkable job this 12 team of Ryan Blaney did. They repaired that car, they got back on the racetrack, and, and I, I thought this car was done. I thought the hit it took and the damage to the right front looked completely finished to me. Great job by the 12 team oh. spending their day. Outside line, looked like there was almost a little contact there. Chris Buescher getting a shove from the 48 car. Corey yeah. Joy going up to block. All the way to the third lane, Rick. Going up there to slow that line, that run down. Party. Oh, look how aggressive Chris Busher is willing to be up front. Something he has had to learn at these super speedway races. At the beginning of the year, he sat down and watched some film with his owner, Brad Kozlowski, who kind of coached him through. Here's how you need to manage a race. Busher told me before the race, only one thing matters to us today, a win. I'm not worried about stage points. I'm not worried about anything. If I'm in a position to keep it up front, I will do it. Right now, he's doing that and making that high line work. But also, remember, his teammate, Brad Kozlowski, now out of the race so he doesn't have that drafting partner to work with him. And a reminder, the reason Corey LaJoy right now is not eligible for the playoffs is he is not in the top 30 in points. That's one of the criteria, and he can't get to, even with earning the most points you could possibly earn in this race and winning. He couldn't get into the top 30, so he's not playoff eligible. Listen in to Joy Logano's radio. We can just see it getting crazy with those guys, you know? Just considering what's, what's on the line for them and if there's weather on the area. Don't you know, get that. That's great information. That tells you why this pack is so intense right now. These guys worried about the weather, racing to the end of the stage, racing to the halfway mark, 80 laps into the race. We're at lap 46 right here. This is pretty crazy. Three wide, 
all bumper to bumper. A lot of cars moving around. Potential to have an accident any moment. Now that bottom line thinned out a little bit. It's thinned out, but they're three wide behind us. So there's no real major energy coming. The straight ride, Coke Zero Sugar Camp, Joey Logano. You can see what he's trying to do. He wants to push Denny Hamlin, but there's somebody right there in front of Denny Hamlin. You can't push him into that guy in front of him and then cause a wreck. It's very, look at the visibility. And this visibility is much better than Joey Logano's got. It's higher than his eyes. You can hardly see, once they get on the straightaway, you can hardly see who's in front of you. You don't know what's gonna happen. Look at that. There's, you have no idea what's happened directly in front of you. That's one of the most difficult parts about speedway racing. He wants to get up there and just push him and push him, but he cannot push him into this wreck. Chase Elliott, who led laps early on, 28 laps. He's fired back here in the field, running 18th right now. That inside line with McDowell, or that middle line with McDowell, dropping back slowly. That's frustrating for all those guys in that line not to be able to figure out how to get that line moving forward. Tyler Reddick diving all the way down to that inside line to get in front of Chase Elliott. Yeah, that was interesting. He saw two cars, only two cars in front of him. Just felt like there wasn't going to be enough power up there. But now that outside line started to form up just a little bit. Dave. 22-year-old Todd Gilliland has a chance to get into the playoffs with a win here in the black number 38, and he could do it. Seth Barber told me this morning, our only real strategy is to avoid all the wrecks and give ourselves a chance at the end. So far, he's done that, Parker, avoided the early stuff, and the 38, if he's there at the end, could get it done. Right, Dave, and what a great run for Coyle Joy, as we pointed out, he's leading some laps. Remember, he did the same thing last year when he was playoff eligible, and I had a long conversation with him yesterday about this race and how he would tackle it, not be playoff eligible if they won this race. He said, I'm going to evaluate my car, but if I've got something I feel like can be up front, I'm going to keep it up there, and he's done that so far in this race. Terry Jones is on this list. He's out front. Win and get into the playoffs. That's what quite a few drivers are hoping to do today. Stage two of NASCAR.
NASCAR Cup Series racing from Daytona, the Coke Zero Sugar 400 field. Finish line. NASCAR Mobile, the official live app of NASCAR. This racing has been crazy. Usually we see them go to the top of the racetrack, ride around single file. And I went to the Talladega race and worked that race, and I was blown away by how intense they ran through stage one and stage two. Still doing it today here in Daytona, giving us some great action. And these are the guys that got to win to get in the playoffs, and they're up there trying to make it happen. Chris Buescher, Eric Jones. Corey LaJoy always finding his way up toward the front in these super speedway races. Even in Atlanta, gets everything he can out of that seven car for Spire. Todd Gilliland also playoff eligible if he could get up front, win this race. Eric Almirola back there too, Rick. We know he's great at super speedways, always up front. Has a new sort of Lease on his racing career, signed a new deal. Extend, he's going to retire, decided not to retire, coming back for a couple years. Dave. And Junior, he said the Smithville was excited about it and as SHR was excited about it. And the kids were even excited about it because they've grown up here at the racetrack. The only downside is young Abby may not get a pony for another year or so. 16th season now for Eric Almirola in the Cup Series. Uh, pony on hold, Rick. Suffered through not having a pony for maybe another two years. I played a little NASCAR heat with his son yesterday. He said he was thrilled that his dad's going to be going back to the racetrack. He loves being here, watching his dad race. He buried the lead, man. Who won? I did, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you got to pick on the kid. I mean, you know, okay. Morning. Alex Bowman up front, really pushing that high line. Earlier, he was pushing Chris Butcher. There, he pushes Eric Jones out to the lead. He has been committed to that line and being aggressive all day long, which is something Greg Ives, his crew chief, has really worked with him here on the Super Speedway races. Earlier this week, Greg Ives said, I'm going to hang it up after 2022 as a crew chief. He is really a terrific mind in the garage area and has really guided some great drivers like you, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Greg Ives saying, hey, I want to spend more time with my family. He is missing his daughter's 16th birthday to be at the racetrack today. He said, that's a perfect example of why I'm ready to be at the shop and not at the track. Those are the moments. I mean, I had to make that same decision, and I remember it was those moments that you miss that you love what you do, but it gets to a point where you have to make a, a shift. I was happy to see that Greg got to make this decision and stay with the company. Hendrick has so much going on. I'm sure, he'll be a very vital asset to that organization even moving forward when he gets off the pit box. Denny Hamlin in the 22. Joey Logano got that outside line run, and they're pushing Bowman up toward the front. Jones is going to try to go up there and block this run. Going to try to take that momentum. We were talking crew chiefs there moments ago. A tip of the hat to Dave Ellens, uh, crew chief for the 43, coming over to Petty GMS and really bringing this organization back up to where it's been. Richard Petty won at this racetrack 10 times, and it's familiar to see a 43 running up front here, but now it's Eric Jones behind the wheel. It's that inside line with William Byron challenging for the lead. Yeah, Byron's worked his way up through this pack a little bit at a time. Now nose it out ahead of Jones for the lead off the of turn four. Getting a little help from Busher behind him. Just an incredible racing. I mean, this, this takes so much concentration, so much focus to push the guy as hard as you can without wrecking him. And as these guys get more and more laps on these tires, the cars are going to start to have handling issues as we've seen in the first stage. This pack rocketing around the racetrack at over 193 miles an hour average. And now it's side by side for the lead between the 24 of William Byron, who's getting a push from Chris Busher, and the 43 of Eric Jones getting a little help there from Alex Bowman in the 48. No, Eric, his car not handling well earlier in the race, but up the racetrack, it may actually drive a little better. You don't have to turn the steering wheel quite as much. So those handling issues may not be as bad. Of course, they had a chance to make a chance to adjust as well, but, but Ultimately, sometimes your car just drives better when you don't get that thing on the left side, on that yellow line. It just doesn't make you have to turn the wheel. The car doesn't get planted the same. And 
you see to me this car just looks like it drives better than it did early. That's great for the guy pushing him, right? When you got it, when you are lined up with the guy in front of you and that car is moving around, you're very reluctant to push him, Dave. But if it's steady and calm, you have a lot of confidence. Yeah, Jeff, I think you're talking about the 24 there. Uh, no confidence moving up in the first stage, and now much better. They made an adjustment on that 24 car. And William is very good at this discipline. He knows how to get it done on a track like this. But it was interesting, the last radio transmission to Byron from the pit box, uh, keep being smart and just ride when you can. Well, Marty, I guess riding at the front is something you can do here as well. Chris Pusher has been the pusher, Dave, first on the top and now on the bottom, trying to make both of those lanes work, but he's trying to push William Byron to the lead. And Steve, I don't know if you're surprised a little bit. I'm surprised how much the tandem is working. Butcher's made it work twice, working with Alex Bowman on the high line, now working with William Byron on the low line. And Mike Herman, the spotter, will say off of it. So he gets on for about three, four seconds. He'll push the 24, and then he'll hop off of it. That's what they're doing on the high line right now with Eric Jones and Alex Bowman. Well, the concern with that tandem is if you look at these cars in the garage area, the bumpers are anything but square. They're very curved if you look from above. So it's very easy to get offset while you're shoving and get a guy turned around. Tell him Bobby to push me in the flat part so I can not get pushed. Yeah, so that was a 24 radio. You saw a little bobble from Byron off of turn four, and he's saying, stop pushing me in the turn. Do not push me in the banking or the transitions. The car is uncomfortable. Only push me when we're absolutely on the flat. And he ain't the only one out there dealing with these type of issues. And that, that's okay when you got the same guy behind you for lap after lap, but when this thing starts getting mixed up, and you got a new guy behind you, you don't have time to give that information. You see they're lapping Blaney, Vance Auto Parts, Cam. They want to fix that car, but he still does not have the speed to stay, stay with these, these faster cars, get lapped again. Well, some of it, I think, was by choice. Look at the hood right now. When he gets around another car, this hood goes crazy, right? This thing moves up and down. By himself, it's a little bit calmer. NASCAR's let this 12 car know. Next time you come to pit road, Work a plan. We want to see that more secure. We're not going to black flag you because it's been riding around. It hasn't come off. But in the draft, it's crazy. I think he's almost better off to be riding by himself, even though he's losing time. It's Eric Jones out in front of Daytona. Again, just 34 laps to go in stage two.
here to the front the 11 of Denny Hamlin as we take a look at the Toyota driver update. Currently up front has led a lap looks like he's going to try to bring the entire field up to the high line here he started 19th and now has led his second lap up front here at Daytona on this Sunday morning race Marty. Hey guys Bubba Wallace got shuffled out he is back in the uh, 23rd position right now look the boss is on top of the pit box once Bubba got shuffled out he said hey, I'm going to ride back here until the end of this stage or at least until our pit stop. Hey uh, Junior by the way Michael Jordan here on the pit box do you remember what happened at Nashville when Michael came out for qualifying and Bubba was supposed to be the fastest car and didn't qualify so well so Michael's got it down now as an owner I don't know if you do as well but Michael doesn't come to the pit box until the race has started so he doesn't want to jinx Bubba but MJ sitting on the pit box right now for his driver Bubba Wallace. Don't want to make him nervous I guess so that's probably probably a good thing. An athlete superstitious, superstitious. That seems surprising. I think that you know when the owner comes to the car before the race, it changes the <laughs> it changes the mood <laughs> around that car for sure. It, it brings uh, makes things a little more tense. One of the fastest cars we're seeing on the racetrack right now, at least as far as gaining positions, has to be Harrison Burton running in the third position right now with a 21. He had a great first stage, finished third in stage one, and now running in that third spot up on the high line as the low line starting to get some more momentum. But Harrison Burton having a great run early in this race. Well, things got mixed up. Uh, saw that outside line kind of running by itself. This is how it all started. Now they're Chris Busher. In three and four, approaching turn four. Watch what happens. 24 gets up the racetrack. He tries to go underneath him, a little bit of contact. The only thing he can do is just get out of the way. Hang a left. You know it's safe down there. So see the 24 up the racetrack? Busher had nothing to do. And just nice, smart move, not an overcorrection, not an overreaction. Just get the car calm back down, get back in line. Now that inside lines worked their way up there. I thought that for sure with Denny Hamlin, Logano leading that outside. They were going to take over. The rest of the field would bail on this inside. Ross Chassain, though, has other ideas as he's bringing Bowman. All those guys along with him, they're inching back forward to make this two by two fight up for the lead. A little bit of gap between the one, the 48, the 43 on the inside line. They're starting to close that back up. That'll create a little energy and they'll move forward a little bit. But it is a slow process with this car. Side drafts a little less than with the traditional, the older car. Can't really use, you don't see as much guys moving around to side draft each other as much as we used to. Yeah, check this out as we ride along with Daniel Suarez with the Coca-Cola Zero Sugar Cam. Look, right there on the left side, that is a digital mirror. You see above him, up high in the middle of the car, that's the traditional mirror. But on this left, that's literally a camera driven mirror that he can look at and it gives a great range it's all mounted on top of the roof facing backwards and look how much you can see to the left and to the right a lot of drivers are using this on super speedways and they put it right there because they don't have to look up they can keep their eyes on the racetrack all the time just a little glance and that mirror gives them all the information that they need that inside line is falling apart right now the 16 car Hemrick dove down to lead that line. You see him right there. Nobody really likes that idea. And you can see them all trying to figure out how to get around Hemrick. I don't think anybody really wants or believes that this 16 car can take them to the front. We'll see, maybe Daniel will buy in. He's got Chase Elliott behind oh, him. He's up there. Yeah, yeah. He was shuffled out. Yeah, okay, he wasn't handling really well right there. Ready to turn left. Saw a gap at the top. Gonna jump to the top. Yeah, it's interesting when a when a car that nobody really knows well or trusts as far as the pace or speed starts to lead a line, everybody everybody bails on that. You can see this outside line now. Four cars in it. Marty. Junior on a day when everybody thought it would be a track position race here at Daytona. Harrison Burton saying, no, nah, not so fast. He started 29th today. He is up in the third position. Once he got to the top 10, he has been able to stay there. I talked to him before the race. He said, always a 50-50 shot. But remember how well he run in, 
grand in the Daytona 500. He said, today I want to continue to earn that respect and show I can be a trustworthy pusher and you can push me as well, Parker. Marty, another driver just proving that theory that you can't pass here today is that 18 car of Kyle Busch. He restarted on this run back in 31st, up 27 positions, up to fourth. He says the race car is just a little bit tight right now as they ride in that top lane behind the 21, but obviously he got some speed in that 18 and able to make passes here at this track. We saw Eric Jones up toward the front most of this race, but the last couple laps, pulled over on the back straightaway, lifted, dropped all the way to the back of this pack. Let's listen to this 43 radio. We're gonna have to drive back, man. I'm getting way too loose off the floor. Hi, Shimple. I'll let Brandon know. Man, that is wild. And this is, you know, we just never hear about cars having hand handling issues in Daytona. With the repaint, we had a lot of grip. But now, the grip in this track's going away. The surface is aging. And running this race during the day has been a challenge for these drivers, Parker. Another driver that's up in the top five that sort of crept up there, Justin Haley in that 31 car for Call Racing, one of those drivers that if he were to win, would put himself in the playoffs. So we know how good he is at Super Speedways in the Xfinity Series, obviously won this race in a range short race a couple years ago. And I asked him and I've talked to him a lot about what makes you so good at Super Speedways. And he said, to be honest, I don't do anything. I let the lines play out for me. I let the moves happen. I'm not the one that you're going to see making those aggressive moves. Those lines play out for me, and I just find myself at the right position at the right time. The exact opposite of maybe that 22 car of Joe Logano there, who will be very aggressive, making those big moves. You'll see that 31 car sort of hang out, but he'll be in the right position when it matters. Right now, find himself in the top five. Yeah, Parker, a lot of guys are sort of kind of hanging out right now, Steve, and I think the reason why is we got green flag pit stops potentially coming soon, and we see every, almost every super speedway race, green flag stops, people get themselves in trouble from trying to get on pit road. Yeah, 10 laps until pit stops. Splash of gas if you want to win the stage, four tires if you're preparing for the end of the race.
green flag pit stops about to take place here. The NASCAR Cup Series racing from Daytona. The Coke Zero Sugar 400 Toyotas coming to pit road. Parker. All right, Rick, and you see just fuel going in that 18 car of Kyle Busch as these Toyotas try to have the minimal time on pit road. Dave. Looks like it's going to be the same for Denny Hamlin. Sunoco fuel only and for the 19 to Mark Truex Jr. who was back on the grid, but it was such a tight pack, he didn't lose much time. He got right with his Toyota teammates, Marty. Rudy Parker saying five seconds of fuel for Bubba Wallace. We ride on board as he goes back out of the racetrack. So see the Toyotas coming one lap earlier than everybody else. We do expect several teams coming down pit road on this lap. Yeah, they, the Toyotas have now shown their hand, right? They took gas only, which tells me they are trying to win the stage. They'll pit again at the end of the stage we jump back to the pack because I thought there would be another wave of cars to pit right there but they stay together very organized why that hurts the Toyotas is this group right here is running way faster than these three little Toyotas right these three guys are organized but look at this monstrous pack very organized single file yeah, but, but Jeff you love coming with only four cars right you feel like you can get on the pit road very clean We'll see what this big group looks like coming to pit road. They come right now. All right, here we go. Hands out the window. You see all the left hands out the window. That's at the end of the back stretch. See right here, Bubba Wallace. He hasn't been able to catch the pack, so they're having to slow down to drag him to them so they can get a draft picked up. Now here they go. We saw the hands out the window. How many are going to turn left? Five, eight. 10. We'll Four. call it the whole field. Yeah, Basically it looks the like field. the nine of Chase Elliott locking up the tires there, too, to get to pit road speed. That's eight. Parker. And guys, Joe Legato leads this whole pack of Fords and Chevys, and they were purposely pitting near each other because they did not expect to pit at the same time as you see right sides for Joe Legato. Chaos on pit road, Marty. Boy, this is what happens when everybody comes on pit road nearly a wreck. Chase Elliott coming in. It's going to be fuel only. Also, Harrison Burton here. They're going to go with four fresh Goodyear tires. Actually, left side tires for Harrison Burton. And the nine was fuel only. Steve, would you be worried about those tires? Seemed to get a little bit of flat spot there when he came to pit road. I'm worried about everything that just happened in this pit cycle. That might be the biggest pack of green flag pit stops I have ever seen. Now it was dicing on pit road, dicing off pit road. Here comes the Toyotas at speed. And I believe they're going to take the lead. And I don't think it's the out lap or the in lap. I think it's just getting on the road. Jeff, you always say less cars. You can be more aggressive to come to pit road. The Toyotas came very small. They really, really attacked it. We'll see how good this momentum is, though. This inside lane starting to get organized, Parker. Steve, one of the things that I said there was that the Chevys and the Fords purposely pitted near each other. As you look, a Chevy going below there, Joe Legato, I believe that's Chase Elliott, so that they thought they would be pitted at different times. They'd have room on pit road. That was not the case. And look at that right there. Joe Logano knew they were coming, so he jumped up. Now the question is, right, will the momentum of the Toyotas work on the top side? Dale Jr., if you're one of these cars on the bottom, I'm guessing you're just wide open, nose to tail, trying to be efficient. Well, we talked about cars sliding tires on the pit road. One of those cars that had a lot of smoke was that eight car second in line on the inside, Tyler Reddick. You have to wonder if he has a flat spot, any kind of vibration, and with that tire, will it hold on? A few more laps left in this stage. Yeah, 15 to go in stage two, and it looks like that inside line is going to stay strong just in front of the Toyotas who pitted earlier. Rick, a little surprised a group of cars didn't just come take four tires. They would have had a long pit stop, and they would have come out about a half a lap back. Maybe just thought with 14 laps to go, they wouldn't have been able to keep up, maybe lose a lap. But surprising everyone did a short stop of either two tires or gas. Reddick jumps into the outside line. Now that allows Stenhouse to come up there behind the nine car on the inside. That 47 car, Ricky Stenhouse pushing the nine of Chase Elliott out front on the inside here. The outside line, Reddick getting a little bit of loose. A push from the 18 car right there in the middle of the corner. Kyle Busch pushing Tyler Reddick down the back straightaway, a big run. Question mark still, the tires on the eight of Reddick. Again, he flat spotted or slid those coming in. And he's getting pushed to the front of the field now. 47 car, second row back, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We see every time we come to play to super speedway races, he is in the middle of it. He's worked himself up to the front of this pack. He's gonna be aggressive. He has to win if he wants to make the playoffs. He's really good at this, and he's really good at it by pushing the issue. Look at this outside line. And these hey. Toyotas. I'm impressed. They've been able to clear at least two cars, almost three on Chase Elliott on the bottom. Dave, what you got on this eight car? 
leading the race junior and safely in the playoffs. Tyler Reg has a very weird feeling race car all day long as you see him get the push from Kyle Busch there. The steering is giving him no feedback. He's tried to give Randall Burnett, his crew chief, different ways of describing what's going on there. He said it feels like the portion bar is rubber. There's usually just a little bit of flex there. So Reddick to the front, but with kind of a weird race car right you now. You can see that car moving around. He's got his hands full mainly because of Kyle Busch right on his back bumper through the corners. We've heard drivers complain about being pushed in the corner. I don't think Kyle's actually making contact in the corners, but it's really upset to say far how close this 18 is to the back bumper. You see it right there. Not quite pushing him, but close enough to make that car really loose. And a little look into the future right here. Tyler Reddick announced that he is signed with Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan's team, their Toyotas for not next year, but the year after. Look who's lined up behind him, all his Toyota future teammates. And in the now, not looking in the future, you look at the 19, he needs as many points as he can get, so he's not in the bottom of the point situation as to getting into the playoffs. Right now, it's Mark Trex Jr. who is fourth back in that outside line, needing every point he can get. Guys, you can feel the intensity picking up. You know, as we come, tend to go in this stage, Laps keep winding down from the end of this race. You can just feel the intensity picking up. You can see it in the moves the drivers are making. It's past the halfway point of the race. It will be official if there was weather that came in the area right now. Everything's looking good on the radar. Reddick is clear now and to move down to the inside line in front of Chase Elliott. That leaves that outside line open for Denny Hamlin and push his teammate Kyle Busch out here. Reddick back to the top to try to block that momentum on the top. Back to the bottom, trying to block the inside. Yeah, you thought it was aggressive before, but with Tyler Reddick up in front, you're gonna see what aggression looks like from the, from the leader. He will cross lanes quicker than anybody, make moves quicker than anybody. Got a big push there from the 18. Tyler Reddick on the outside. On that inside, it is still the nine of Chase Elliott.
NASCAR fans, don't let anything pass you by. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. Coming up right after the race, it will be the NASCAR America Post Race Show here on CNBC. And then plenty more racing to go. It's the Ipsa WeatherTech Racing from VIR. It's the GT only weekend. VIR, that means the GT Daytona and the GT Daytona Pro Classes are racing. Right now, FAF Porsche, they've clinched the championship in the GTD Pro, but uh, a lot of fun. Uh, the IMSA WeatherTech Series, again, that'll be coming up right after this race here on CNBC. Dave. Rick, four Toyotas in the top line there, the one third in line, the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. He needs stage points as we come to the end of this stage. Listen to the 11 radio right in front of him. Yep, I'm aware. Martin needs all the points he can get. Let Martin know on the last lap coming through the line, I will give him five. Okay, Martin, then just help me break. Oh, there you go. Denny trying to do as much as he can for his teammate Martin Truex Jr. Jeff Burton, how hard would that be to quote unquote give Martin a spot there coming to the checkers? Well, it'd be, it'd be really hard because everybody else doesn't care. And the fact is that all these guys, with the exception of these Toyotas, they want track position. And even Bubba Wallace, he's in a situation where he needs to win. He's back there in that outside lane. So, yeah, it's easy to say it's another thing to do. Four laps to go to the end of stage two. An outside line with the Toyotas working really hard. Denny Hamlin trying to push Kyle Busch out front, trying to push him clear. Still separation between those four Toyotas. Here Bubba trying the... to do the same as their little momentum building. Yep, here they come. You see what happens though. They, one line will get a run, then, it, that, then it'll slow that other line down. Then they get bunched back up and get a big push. Then that, that He's bottom line there. takes it. Denny's trying to do thinking about going to the bottom. Decided against it. He's going to stay up top, get back here, and get his help. Wasn't clear. So Kyle the 18, goes down there. Yeah, now he's going to block that inside <laughs> line. Denny's probably like, man, if I'd have known he's going to do that, I'd have done this in the middle of three and four. I'd have went with you. Yeah, Tyler Reddick, he tried to jump to the outside of Kyle Busch. Kyle wasn't having it. Now that puts the nine car leading this inside line of Chase Elliott. With Ricky Stenhouse Jr. trying to push him. That interesting dynamic. Right now, Tyler Reddick racing for RCR. He jumps up into the Toyota line. And I never thought I'd say this, but a stage win, I think, would build some momentum for the 18. It has been a rough summer for Kyle Busch. Contract negotiations, a big storyline. Just a stage win, I think, could be enough to at least turn the new cycle better for this 18 car. Inside line's lost all of its momentum right here. Look at the outside line. Only three cars, really four or five on the bottom. And that was all because of Reddick moving out of the inside line. It really disturbed everything happened in there, took all the energy out of it. And Reddick, a Chevrolet, gets up here into the Toyota line, but they're going to boot him out. Yeah, they and, shuffled him out. And that's going to pick this inside line momentum back up. Now look at all of them driving to the bottom. It's four Toyotas once again. One, two, three, four here at Daytona. And Chase Elliott doing Chase Elliott things. He's never won to ride in line. He's always trying to push the issue. He jumped to that outside trying to be the leader of that line. We never see him just content. He's always changing lanes trying to make something happen. And so is the 22. Logano jumps out of line on that inside. He gets in front of Elliott. Chase is going to try to get to the back bump of this 22 right here. Trying, trying, now he connects, pushes, gonna have to turn him loose in the travel a little bit. Here comes the high line, one lap to go in stage two. Tons of speed in this top lane. Kyle Busch decided not to try to go up and block it. It was so much momentum, he just couldn't do it. Way up the racetrack now. Todd Gillen through the middle. That's gonna break it up. Chase is gonna go to the back here. The nine gets shuffled out. Now the 11 moves to the outside for that outside line. And he's to the top. Truex now in the back bumper of this 18 car. Kyle Busch hasn't been able to clear the 11. The 11 running up the racetrack. What will they do for the 19? Needing the most points out of all the Toyotas. Danny side drafted him a little bit there. Kyle Busch goes a little high. Here comes the 19, but it's Kyle Busch. He's going to win stage two. Denny did come out of the gas and let that 19 through. Kyle Busch, you know, his last win here was 2008.
do the numbers, that's 5,167 days ago. It's been that long here at Daytona. You look at the hood of the 12 of Ryan Blaney. It is very difficult for him in the Coke Zero Sugar 400. NASCAR on CNBC is brought to you by New Coke Zero Sugar, now even more delicious. Credit One Bank, a credit card company. Applebee's, help us crush childhood cancer. And by Toyota. Let's go push. Parker. Stage two winner Kyle Busch will take four tires here. He says it's a little free out front, so don't touch it. When I pull back the pack, I like that turn. They're going to fill it full fuel, Dave. Nine more stage points for Martin Truex Jr. He has to wait on the fuel, so they will change four Goodyear tires. Noah Gregson is going to pit right in front of him, so have to be careful leaving pit road, Marty. Bubba Wallace coming to pit road as well. Four fresh Goodyear tires are going to hold him and wait on the fuel here. They do release him. Booty Barker told him there is rain at the beach. It might be coming this way. You have to be uber aggressive to start stage three. Big pickup there for the 34 of Michael McDowell. We'll be back for the restart of stage three.
We're mapping the schedule presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Next week, we're in Darlington. And if any of you are traveling fans running into car issues, Advanced Auto Parts is there for all of your car needs. And watch your speed when you go through McBee. You see that inclement weather. That is to the north and a little bit to the east. Uh, close to the beach, and we've heard crew chiefs and teams. What do you say about rain over there in three? I said, it's raining hard now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's Ty Dillon, hey, and hey. he's out front. Great, great, in my eyes, great strategy by those guys. Ty Dillon, McLeod, McDowell, Busher. Why not? Why not stay out? Who knows what's going to happen? Well, Ty was running 19th. Ty Dillon was staying. Oh, look, he's got to commit. We start talking about him. The rain's not here. I wouldn't have given up on this strategy that Come early. on, Ty. You had us convinced. Remember, it's not just rain. It's that electricity thing. We saw Justin Haley do it once here before. McDowell, McDowell he hit it on lap 97, so he's pretty much on the same sequence as everybody else. But I would have liked to see those guys play that strategy out. Yeah, when that was one to go, they bailed off the strategy, which I guess would be the time to change but you see that dark cloud right there right? oh yeah I mean, it's it could be raining any minute yeah any second you could start raining Dave. Dave and you all have played how it started how's it going listen to these two radio transmissions from Martin Truex Jr's crew thank you Denny Hamlin you did a good job there good job yeah man don't look good at all so stick with the program just stay up front here if it gets stupid and uh we think the rain ain't gonna come then uh Maybe we'll go back, but I think just keep with it. It's over the beach right now. Four. How it started, teammate Denny Hamlin uh, going slow a couple of times there to help Martin Truex get those nine stage points. How it's going, well, right up front for right now. We'll see what happens next. All right, so the apology or the thank you on the 19 radio, Denny Hamlin. All right, Dale Jr., we watched this. Take me through it. We have Hamlin on the bottom lane. How does he work this so magically to help his teammate in the 19? Well, he's lined up with his teammates, and he gets out a lot. He says, you know what? I'll pull up here, and I'm just going to ride right beside this 19. I'm going to sit in front of this 22, and he's little push that he probably wasn't expecting from the 22. Joey's like, hey, let's go. <laughs> let's go to the front. And then he's like, I'm not going to do that. A little side draft right here surprised me. But then you'll see right here, he kind of moves to the middle. Joey sees what's going on, goes to the outside. Then he starts to throttle back. That is so well done, right at the line. I mean, it's, it's easy to say, hey, help your guy out. But then being able to make it look that easy, pretty impressive. Leading the field with of course, is look back on the field, the Coke Zero Sugar Pace Car Cam. And now the field. Coming up on the Geico We Start Zone to get stage three underway. McDowell in the 34 on the inside. The Daytona 500 winner. Alongside the 11 of Denny Hamlin, a three-time Daytona 500 winner. Dow taking that inside long, that inside lane and running strong with it. Let's see how the Penske cars that are teamed up here, if they can help push that 34. Toyota's organized up top. One Toyota missing the 18 of Kyle Busch. Too fast entering. That penalty puts him back to 31st. We'll see if he can catch back up to his teammates. There he is, trying to work his way back through the pack. Comes up to Ty Dillon in the 42. And these drivers have been told. Operation. Uh oh. Copy, really. Denny Vibration, Hamlin. is that the 11? Yeah, that was Denny Hamlin. So the last thing you hear you have is a wheel come off at Daytona. The Ford's not going to stick together. Pagano's going to jump that outside line with his teammate, Cendric. They're going to bring the Toyotas with them. Cendric really loose on the nose of that 11 car. Look at the two, the two car. Got his hands full. Parker. Guys, as we saw them get rid of that Ford of Mike McDowell, the two. Oh, here's the big wreck right Middle here. The wreck here. Stay, where you, are, the stay seven, where you are. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Let's see if 19 gets any big damage right here so far. Doesn't look like any big hits. Oh, the right front. Yeah, the right front fender torn off. And so the caution comes out with 59 laps to go. Martin Shrek's Jr. had fought to within 10 points. Ryan Blaney, who was involved in an accident earlier in the race. Again, the two fighting to be the top in points. They know that at least one of them will get in. 
I, I hear what Martin's saying. I, I, I'm not so sure I don't agree with him. I mean, you gain that many points. Why, are, why be in the middle of it? Enough guys are laying back at the back of the pack. You could have laid back with them and still been 10 positions ahead of Laney. I don't agree. Well, it's ten back points, to facts. That's the way it was. But he had was room to go. the good up front. I mean, if he goes back to 15th, he's out. He's behind no, Laney. There was 10 people behind him. Yeah, there see, was I, a, there, there, I not everybody the was buzzer. racing. Not everybody was up there racing. There were some people laying back. Either way, he's wrecked with the right Either front way. Off at this point. Either way, he you, you know this debate you just heard? This is what every crew chief and driver does in the field. You heard Truex. He said it. We shouldn't have been up there. Redding just clipping the back bumper. The McDowell turns him into the outside wall. It was Ross Chastain in the one that was right behind the 19. You'll see it right here as the seas kind of part and it becomes three wide. Yeah, just it's Daytona. It's uh, every, that whole debate we just had. This whole wreck we just had is the. <laughs> it is Daytona. It's what the situation you get put into. Chase Elliott doing just a nice job slowing down, letting the dog get run over from behind. Unfortunately for McDowell, that is going to hurt. You know, oh look at Corey the Joy. A, yeah, Corey's always runs well. I don't know how much damage is on that car. Intensity picking up. Just weren't lined up for the junior when he started pushing him. This watch uh, the damage on the 19. He's trying to get back to the pits. And yeah, without tearing up more of that. Trying to go as slow front. as he can without having that right front tire. You see the tire trying to. Yeah, you're fine. So all right. If you mentioned, let's find. Well, all right. Take a second here. The 19 is right here. So he's about the fourth car in line. Because you were calling it live, they look pretty good. So let's take a look at where he gets in this accident, Jeff. Yeah, he just, you know, he, like we so showed earlier, he can't see all this starting to happen. So he starts seeing right now, starts, drivers are slowing up. He tries to get slowed up, just got hit just in the back a little bit, shot him to the right. He tried to get slowed down to keep from hitting the wall and came back across the racetrack. Look at that tire pop and blow that right front fender off. I was look. I was like, did he make contact with the right front fender on the wall, or what happened there? Right here. Watch this right front fender. Boom, boom. That's Damn. wild. So Steve, I was wondering where the fender yeah. came off. That's crazy. So Steve, the great comp, the great thing for Martin Truex Jr. is he said the steering's fine. Yeah. So right now that means they've got body damage, and if he can get himself, if the steering is indeed fine and the car drives okay, if he can get himself in the middle of the pack, he can keep up with this pack with that right front fender off. We would have been just fine there. And one car ran you over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, you, know, <laughs> you always dissect the wreck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we had a debate on whether you should be there or not. But listen, this debate we had up here, you know, we have a heated debate, and we have really no chips on the table. That's that's the pressure these guys are put under to come to Daytona. You know what it takes to run well, but you know the risks you take to put yourself in that position. And there's no good answer. We've seen drivers ride around in the back, find a way to win. We've seen drivers ride around in the back, find themselves in a wreck. It, it, there's just, you don't know what's going to happen. You have no way of predicting it. Ross Chastain involved in this one, and it looks like the wrecker's coming to pick him up. He was on the apron. Dave. And if you, by the way, if you talk to James Small, the crew chief, about their philosophy, even at this point in the race, uh, going for it and, and racing up front has worked better for them than hanging back in the past, although I don't know with that bucket of points if, if uh, you know, that's debatable today. As far as the car goes, you heard it, steering is good. He thought the, quote, left rear might be out a little bit, so they'll come back down here again. It had a vibration, but Martin attributes that to the left side tires, which have not been changed yet. They'll come down, work on it some more here, and see what they can scrape together. Remember, 16 stage points earned already today. That was the good news. This wreck, the bad news so far for Martin Truex. They're going to work some more on the 19. He's back on pit road. And to Jeff's point, you know, they can't add a fender. Um, and I was just making sure, you know, once you get back green, you can kind of stay within the pack. So another big one happens. The fourth caution of the day at Daytona.
NASCAR on CNBC is brought to you by Propane, environmentally friendly energy for everyone. And by New Coke Zero Sugar, now even more delicious. So Rick, we just saw another, the second multiple car wreck here at Daytona. So I think it's time. Let's talk about this next gen car. There's been much made about the wheels and different things. So let's take a look at our Toyota virtual car. Talk about a safety aspect of this next gen car when it comes to aerodynamics. When these cars get backwards, the goal is to leave them on the racetrack. We don't like to see them get up in the air. And much like the old car, this car has hood flaps, which basically open and take the high pressure area out from underneath the hood. They also have roof flaps, much like the old car. One thing that's very different though for the next gen car is this right here, you're gonna see this green cable that is connected to the right side flap. What happens is when that right side flap opens, it pulls this cable and it actually also releases a flap down in the diffuser. So remember the bottom of this car, very, very, very smooth. So the right side flap opens, cable pulls, boom. The flap goes down on the diffuser to try to slow the air down with the whole goal of keeping these cars on the racing surface. We saw this example back in February. We've seen it a couple times today. This is the Daytona 500. Tyler Reddick spins around. We're gonna take a quick look at this. As he spins around, we freeze it right here, right? Roof flaps down and right there, the diffuser. Everything looks normal. As he spins around a little bit further, both roof flaps comes up and bang, there comes that trap door. Now it's down below the bumper, slowing the air down, that matters. Because when this eight car hits the wall, watch it starts to climb, Truex pushes him, that car is trying to leave the ground. Those flaps kept it on the ground. Now, unfortunately, they are designed to help, but the risk still exists. Contacts with other cars will get you upside down. Harrison Burton got to experience it back in February. Basically an aero situation with contact with another car, a quick flip over, landing directly on its roof. The young driver climbs out, the roof stays intact, so it, did its job, another perfect example today. Look at the seven, he gets up in the air, spins around, and now these flaps come up, and you see the right rear of that car tries to leave the ground when the flaps basically pop up. The car sets back down at 160, 170 miles an hour. Race cars are great, but they are great on the racing surface. Safer for everyone if they don't get in the air. Yeah, Steve, remember a commercial airliner, which weighs tons and tons and tons, it actually lifts off the ground at 170 miles an hour. These cars are going 193 miles an hour, and they're keeping them on the ground. And just to clean up the whole story, so here are the roof flaps on the nine, right? Here's one, and here's the other. And basically the idea is there's two of them. And it, they're not open to the inside, right? That's a carbon box, and that's a carbon box. This has nothing to do with like letting air out of where the driver is sitting. They are purely changing the speed. If you sit on an airplane and you look out at the back of the wing, when those flaps go up and down, when you're landing or taking off, it's the same idea. These are designed to change the airspeed of these cars when they're backwards. You can see the cable actually right there as well. There's the cable that's in there. So this whole system was a, uh, you know, addition to this new car and it's worked very well. Back underway at Daytona. Logano and Reddick leading the field now two by two. 53 laps to go. Again, a new winner inside the top 30 in points could win their way into the playoffs. The two drivers that are fighting for points right now, Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex Jr., both have had issues today, both involved in accidents. These guys at the bottom, they cleared that outside lane. They're not to just stay in the bottom, no lane change. Bowman closing up on the back of the 22 of Logano. Those two. Trying to get that inside line going once again. Really good push from this 47 car into the back of Reddick. Clears Reddick. Reddick go to the bottom here. Back to the top. Expecting that 47 to come. Oh, Reddick stays down. Blocking that 22. Ricky Stouts Jr., that 47 car. Remember, he was leading the Daytona 500 late. So when Brad Keselowski was trying to push him from behind, ended up spinning him out, give me Breck. He knows how to get around this racetrack. See all the pushing, how the cars are moving around. Wow. There's so much contact down that back straightaway. You know, Rick, I hate to say these words on national television, but I'm going to say it. I think Jeff Burton was right, because now that the field resets, four points between Truex and Blaney, so the argument of not being in the pack for Truex might have been the wrong argument, but that'll be the only time I admit that in the public. It, Jeff was right. It has been recorded, too, so the problem now is he can hold it against you forever. Well, rarely does such an event have to happen. <laughs>
<laughs> the 22 of Logano leading that inside line and leading here at Daytona, but the outside line now getting some more momentum. Here comes Reddick in the eight. Marty. Hey, Rick, you can feel the intensity pickup here, 51 to go. We've talked about the weather that's in the area. I think crew chiefs and teams are not as worried about the weather being rain here at the racetrack. What they are worried about is lightning from that storm. If it's eight miles from the track, they would have to shut the race down. They told Bubba Wallace on the radio before they went back green, take every run you can. We don't know when this race might end. 22 right there down into turn one. I'm convinced that that weather concern is what caused that last wreck. These drivers aren't looking at 50 to go. They're concerned this race could end at any moment. That means the intensity level is going to be picked up. Oh, Logano got pushed hard right there, almost into the side of Reddick. Was able to catch it before he got into the side of the eight or the 47. Once again, Alex Bowman giving him another shove. As they go through three and four, and back out on to the front stretch here at Daytona. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has won at this racetrack and Talladega. More movement from the 22. And further in the back, Kyle Busch working himself up from the back on that outside lane. He's trying to generate a third lane. Keeps jumping on the outside of guys, trying to recruit enough drivers to invest in this out the upper lane to try to get to the front. Drivers see that big dark cloud. Do they believe what they're hearing on the radio? Yeah, the Brest Street car giving us that shot in the 18. There, Kyle Busch just in front. Look at the fan back out, three wide back here. Yeah, see, they're trying to get that third lane going. Dave. Rick, Tyler Reddick wouldn't be able to do this if the team had not learned from February here at Daytona. Randall Burnett told me that he described the car as sketchy most of the day. They put a lot of speed in the car, but left out some drivability. So they built drivability into it for this weekend, and then from a night race to a day race, drivers, you know that. If he didn't have that drivability, there, he'd been in trouble today. Man, it feels like a wreck is any minute. Look at this. Bubble Wallace to the inside. Tucks it behind the eight. Bubble Wallace up to second. Cole Custer got out of line. Now we got a three line, three wide now. We got a third line forming up there. Chase Briscoe in the 14. Cole Custer behind him, his teammate. Stenhouse Jr. way up the racetrack, almost into the 14. <laughs> he was loose. He really, really, really loose. And you see how many laps it took for that third lane to get generated. Some guys in the back had to try it, and then people kept bailing in the front, oh, and contact. now it's there. Some contact. Bubba Wallace back to the bottom of the racetrack. 23 moving around here right on the nose of that 48. Oh, they're up again. Logano almost into the wall. They're, they're loose. They're not comfortable at all getting pushed up there. And moving out of line once again, that's the 47, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's trying to see some momentum work that high line. Tyler Reddick, Bubba Wallace running up front one, two. Oh, Bubba to the bottom of the racetrack got loose. Cindric tried to go to the outside of him to get to that third in that middle lane. This is insane. Oh, it's just so, it's such quick decisions you have to make. Oh you don't want to think this out. Look at Bubba Wallace, what's he going to do now? Ended up having a decision make, decided to push Reddick. Yeah, Bubba, hard to the left there. Off the nose of the 48. And now, once again, it's Tyler Reddick, Bubba Wallace. They're lined up on the inside. Austin Cindric in the two, trying to push, but now it's going to be three wide. As Denny Hamlin goes to the middle, he sees the nine of Chase Elliott and wants to jump in front of that car. Oh, man. Bubba's falling back off the back of that eight car. He's going to get a big push up from Denny Hamlin. Watch this inside line. What does Bubba do? They continue to help the eight of Reddick. Goes right to the back bumper. This inside line better get organized. Wild racing here in stage three at Daytona.
It's NASCAR Cup Series from Daytona, the Coke Zero Sugar 400. Out front, Alex Bowman. And how do you stay out front? Let's have a look at the Rudolph Mortgage Keys to Victory Lane. At the end of the race, coming to the checkered, you're going to get a push from somebody. Whoever wins this race is going to need help. Getting that push at the right time is going to be critical. This is the Rex. We've already seen multiple wrecks take out multiple drivers with real opportunities to win. Get the car going into this, further into this race. And you got to use that mirror and your spotter. So looking in the mirror, you're going to look in the mirror at least half of the lap. Maybe on the last couple of laps, you're looking in the mirror maybe 75, 80% of the lap. Hey, I'll take a little luck. Maybe I'll just be leading when it rains. I think there's a lot building down here in Florida. The radar is pretty covered with some little spotty showers. If one hits this track at the right time, Marty, it could determine who makes the playoffs. And look at that bottom line. The Toyota starting to form up. Kyle Busch leading it. Bubba Wallace right behind him. And behind him, his co-owner, Denny Hamlin, who is coaching his young driver from behind the wheel, the 11. Listen. Denny saying, drag back off of the corner. Drag back off the corner. Let us get connected off the street. So that little lesson from Denny Hamlin trying to do everything he can to put his driver into the playoffs. One owner sitting on the pit box in the form of Michael Jordan. The other owner right behind him on the racetrack trying to get Bubba Wallace in the 2022 playoffs. And remember the Toyotas that haven't been involved in accidents are the three that are together because there's the 19 and the 20 that have been involved in accidents already. They're fighting for points, at least the 19 of Martin Trex Jr. is. That inside line working its way toward the front though. Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace, they're not quite as tight together. Going to lose a little bit of momentum here. It becomes a little bit of a difficult scenario for Toyota because if Bubba Wallace wins this race, he could knock Martin Trex Jr. out of the race. So one Toyota would potentially get in, another one would get knocked out. Now, Rick, but like, a lot like last week, we saw two Hendrick teammates duel for the win into turn one, and there was question marks. You know, you don't want to help another manufacturer, another team in, but when it comes to Toyota or Toyota, Bubba or Truex, you know, may the best driver and team advance. And I, I think that's why the fans are here. That's why the fans tune in. Right here, he's out board with Austin Dillon, the Brez Tree camera. I can't tell if that is a broken glass on the camera. Looks like it's had a little contact with something. There's been enough debris flying around in these wrecks. A couple of cars up here on the inside, much, much slower than the lead pack. We've been seeing these cars go to the top of the racetrack. But being on the bottom is going to make it really tight over here in turn two. A lot of wrecks off of turn two today. One of them is that 12 of Ryan Blaney. It's always a tense situation coming up on lap cars when you're two by two. Everybody gets through cleanly. Back there that was pushing the 12. 45 of Ty Gibbs again filling in for the driver of the 45, Kurt Busch, who was injured at Pocono. Parker. As you see there, the 40. Michael McDowell's had such a strong season, but involved in that wreck there in a must-win position, at least for the infield care center. Michael, what happened there? Yeah, you know, with, with the weather, you know, right around the corner, we could kind of see that this was going to be an important restart and didn't want to give up the lead. But, um, you know, just fighting hard. You know, the Horizon Hobby Ford Mustang was pretty fast and felt like we had a shot at it. And I couldn't tell. You know, I had a run on the 22 trying to get back to his outside right when the 8 hooked up to my bumper. And I think the 8 was a little bit too far right and got on my right rear corner, kind of turned us into the wall. And, you know, it's, it's super speedway racing. We are all going for it there. You know, obviously, I could have rolled out of the gas and stayed behind the 22, but if it had been raining right now, I'd have been second. I'd been really upset with myself. So, super speedway racing, we were going for it, and uh, we had to win. We had to get into the playoffs. We just weren't able to do it. Mike McDowell went for it. That's how much it means. And again, at 23 back there, trying to win his way in. Kyle Busch had a moment down here in turn one and two. Gets a little bit loose off the nose of the 23. A couple of Tank slaps right there. He gathers it back up. Back up front, though. The 22 car has dove to the inside. Alex Bowman. He's got help. At 14 behind him. Chase Briscoe going to the middle. Chase Briscoe to the lead. Briscoe's not going to stay behind the 22. He wants to be up front. And now he goes to the nose of the 48 of Alex Bowman, hoping for a push. What a move. Oh, he can't get that push. Oh, oh he's into the wall and they'll collect more cars behind. The 14 stays on the ground. Break, hold the brake, hold the brake. You can see it happening. As he was coming around, Bubba Wallace with contact right there. 
Watch those guys go around turn three and four. The 14's driving up the racetrack. He is sideways, he's loose. And he's lifting off the gas. The 48 is waiting, 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 right in the left rear quarter panel. It finally spins the 14, the 14 car out. We've seen that so many times today with guys drive up the racetrack because they're so loose and they can't turn the wheel. Let's go out of the car. He had just made the move to get in front of the 22 of Logano, and this happened. So the 41 dives in the middle of the back straightaway to take the lead, but look at him up the racetrack. He's loose, and he starts coming back down the track right in the left rear quarter panel. Goes the 48. The 48 wants to push him, but he needs to push him in the right side, but the 14's driving up the track loose, and that offsets him the wrong way. And that 14 car was working its way upside down. Yep. Let's take another look at this right here. Watch when this thing gets backwards. It turns around and it climbs a long ways off the ground before it comes back down. My goodness. Mm. That thing is, that's scary because, listen, tip, tipping over is bad enough, but now flipping into the grass and into traffic, you know, we've seen other cars. This will be a great onboard. Let's take a look. Onboard of Bubba Wallace. Down, 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 down. Keep coming, keep coming straight. Straight down pit road. All right, all right, all right. That's how quick things happen here at Daytona. Think about this, we talk about avoiding wrecks and the dilemma of Martin Truex Jr. All the wrecks today have started from the second position. So in the front of the pack, just, it's so aggressive. That 14 car, I, so thankful those flaps work with that car back on the ground. So thankful this three car backwards on board with Austin Dillon. See how he gets turned around. Stay middle here, stay down. Oh, the middle, keep right coming, here. down pit so road, down pit road. He's, he's straight down pit road, doesn't get to that pit, wheel, pit wall at all. Man, that is just scary. This is one track, normally pit lane is a long ways away, but the entrance of pit road and down to pit stall one, you know, you're, you're, you feel a pretty safe distance away, but the speed is obvious. So many of these drivers are drivers that have to win next round of the playoffs. 48's damage is heavier than I initially thought. Man, that is. And then how about Chase Elliott right here? I think he's gonna get through it clean. He's on the brakes. I think Eric Almarola in the 10, also an evasive move down pit road. Which you can use, that's legal. You just have to get, continue to slow down. Let's see, the 38 hits the 10. Right there at the top of your screen, kind of, and he's now going to turn left and miss the 23, just Look at barely. This run. Yeah. Wow. And now he's watching the three spin out in front of him. Not sure where he's going to go. Dylan slides. Well, you know the intensity we're picking up. You know, eight drivers involved, six of them must win drivers. And I think, you know, that's what we've been talking about all week, right? Like, they are going to have to push this to an uncomfortable level because their season is now on the line or at least their playoff hopes. They'll still get to run the final 10 races, but it's never as much fun as being in the playoffs. I mean, you look at it, Austin Dillon was one we talked about. Harrison Burton, actually, he probably, we didn't talk about enough all week long. He showed up and showed up in a big way today. A great race car, 23. We've seen his consistent runs down here. I will say the 47, though, at this point, from this distance, looks pretty decent. Let's listen into the 48. I, like, couldn't get off the 14. I lifted and just kept getting shoved and couldn't get off of them. I mean, drivers, that's kind of it, right? You see the issue, but the guy behind you doesn't see the issue, so you just kind of get pushed off into the wreck. Yeah, the 14 gets up the racetrack. The 48 knows I do not want to push him in the left rear, but he can't, He's and he's trying to throttle back too, but he's getting the energy from the pack behind him is sending him forward into the back of that 14. He's like, I know what's about to happen here. I, there's nothing you can do. So helpless. But the 14 being so far up the track really gave the 48 no opportunity to get to the right rear quarter panel, right? So, so Jeff and I talked about, hey, be in the pack or not in the pack. But take me into this. You know, it's so easy to say, well, just lift. But, but how many times does that happen and they don't wreck? Like, we watch these guys going around there, and we're ooh and we're on. It's like, as a driver, I don't want to say you get numb to it, but you just have to be committed, right, Jeff? Like, every time a guy gets a little out of shape, you can't completely just check up. You just have to keep rolling, and then, you know, one out of ten ends up with a car backwards. Yeah, correct. And we keep talking about a particular line going better than the other line, whether it be the outside or the inside. And the reason that line's running better is because they're all closer together. They're pushing each other. They're close to each other. So that's the problem. When you're that close to somebody, if something happens, you can't get slowed up quick enough. Let's hear what Joey Logano and his team are talking about. 
Everybody's in their window here, so we'll... It, you sure with the weather? What do you mean, am I sure with the weather? I mean, it, it stayed the same. I can't, can't predict it, but if it goes green, we're going to have to pit. Everybody's a weatherman. <laughs> I mean, well, the you know, driver... the driver's like, are you sure? Because he's looking yeah. out of the window, and he's like, I see dark clouds. And the problem for the crew chief is he's been watching his radar, and it's kind of stayed the same. It really hasn't changed that much. So here's the options. A few drivers are going to stay out. Parker, it looks like a few coming in. Right, Joe, the guy decides to do fuel only here to get them to the end of the race. But that's a lot of teams that the rain was about seven minutes out, and that was about five minutes ago, Dave. Martin Truex Jr. is going to pit the 19 car. It's really, the front end is really too far down on the track. So they're going to make adjustments here to try to make it a little more drivable for Martin Truex in case he needs to grab just a couple of spots, a couple of points, which could get him to the playoffs, Marty. How good is your weather forecast, Dave? Chase Elliott coming down pit road for fresh your tires, the fuel he needs to make it to the end of the race. You see Truex still on pit road, but a host of cars staying out. Boy, it's getting interesting with 32 to go. The points battle between Truex and Blaney heats up, but with in and you're in. That's the goal for these cars that stayed on the racetrack. Justin Haley, he's won here before. Could he repeat and punch his ticket into the playoffs? With weather in the area, everyone looks back to Justin Haley and what he was doing in 2019. A big wreck happens, and they make the decision when so many cars come to pit road to stay out, including Kurt Busch. And just moments later, lightning in the area, and then rain, and it ends up Justin Haley is in victory lane celebrating. Well, the teams are getting smarter. That was kind of at the front end of this lightning policy. We always knew rain went into rings. Uh, but, you know, as technology improves, lightning can be detected, you know, and it's a very uh, serious situation. So now there's things in place, and that's exactly what the 31 team is thinking. Let's listen in. Give up a good finish, but I think this is our best bet to try to win this race. Yep, yeah, where are you from? For one reason. Yeah, simple. I mean, it's our only shot. Which one of these cells would get some lightning in it so they'd and give us a hold in the rain to get here. It's Trent Owens right there with the sunglasses on. Trent, you got to take the sunglasses off if you want the light. You got to at least look the part. <laughs> like the rain is coming. I like this call from Trent. Guys, you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, calling in the Xfinity Series and their jump to Cup and, and perhaps about A.J. Allmendinger at the road courses. But Justin Haley, in my opinion, is having a very quiet but very impressive first full-time year at college, right? He, he runs well. He runs inside the top 20 quite a bit. When you look at it, right, he has a couple top 10s with only a couple DNFs. He runs all the laps. I think that helps him as he moves into his Cup Series career. Junior, I know you love him as a drafter, 
I mean, four times in the Xfinity Series, he seems to always find his way to the front. Yeah, he's great at the super speedways. Look what it does to the points, too. Haley in. That would put Blaney out. They're separated by three points right now as we go back to racing. 30 laps to go at Daytona. Justin Haley just off the front of the 22 of Joey Logano. Eric Jones back up into the front with the 43 as well. Haley trying to get this 43 to push him. An aggressive blocking from Justin Haley now. Oh, oh and the back goes to 43. He collects the 22. My goodness. And the caution will come out again. This is just what the Haley needs, right? Because now it's just time. I say that because he has 33 laps of fuel burned out of his car. So probably 15 more laps, maybe 16. He could nurse this fuel tank. He knows he has to pit again. So if you're hoping for rain, time's on your side. You like to ride around under yellow. Which is why that block, yeah, that yeah. extremely aggressive block is happening right now. You have to treat yeah, this as if you're coming. When the 31 went up. 43 trying to get around the pit road on these flat tires without any damage. The 22, though, looks like he has a bit of a toe issue there, Steve, on the right front. Yeah, this car has flat tires and a toe issue. I agree. Right front tire is definitely pointing. Yeah, no, both well, tires maybe they're both turned down. that way. Yeah. Maybe it's a rear toe link bend. We can't tell. Yeah, he's correcting it with the front. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I think the tail's to the left. We mentioned Justin Haley and aggressive. Why did he try to get out front? Well, take a look at the radar. This is what right now the teams are looking at and what these drivers are being told. There's a cell that is to the southwest right now of the racetrack, and it's headed right at us. So how long will it take until potentially a lightning strike or potentially rain? They want to be up front if that possibility happens. Well, and you have to remember, right, it's not just Haley. I'm going to circle this right here. Six points. Right, Truex came into this race 25 points behind Blaney. Blaney was in an early accident. They made repairs, but with Ty Gibbs being multiple laps down, Blaney hasn't been able to get any of his laps back. He's back there in 30th. Truex is riding around in 14th right now. Six positions on the racetrack is what keeps Truex in front of Blaney in points. That only matters if we have a new winner, but oh, by the way, that's what we have is currently a new winner leading the race. So very complicated situation. It'll be an emotional week for Blaney. Remember, this all really kind of started with the Kurt Busch news, right? Like at one point, we thought there was only one spot, and then Kurt Busch removes his medical waiver because of his concussion, said, I'm not going to come back. Um, now the 22 is. That's a so fish. Can't get it. Can't get it. Aims <laughs> in the right direction. He's trying to. He's got flat tires on the floor. That's where we're trying to get a push record here. Stuck here. From behind, from behind. Well, I don't like him. He's wanting them to push him from behind. NASCAR has built these new rigs where they hook them to the wheels. They actually, put this apparatus to the wheels, pick the front of the car up. And look at the clouds just over this record right now. That's what these drivers and teams are seeing. When Haley came off turn four and saw that, it looked like a Christmas tree to him. I mean, it was like, it's Christmas Day. Play this as long as we can. Haley out front of Daytona, 28 laps to go. The regular season finale.
Stay with us right after the race for NASCAR America post race show, followed by IMSA WeatherTech Racing again from VIR. Five different manufacturers have won the last five TD races at VIR. That's going to be a great one there. Dave. Rick Trent Owens is a crew chief for Justin Haley, and we just saw him hold the pack off there. Can he do it again, or does he need the weather, Trent? Yeah, we need the weather. I mean, this is our shot to win and try to get in the playoffs, so uh, pretty high-risk call, but, you know, a win would change a lot of things for us, so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, good to have Celsius on the cars primary, and we're just having a lot of fun right now, but it's going to be tough to hold these guys off. I mean, you know how these rain delays are, and it's time to go for everybody. You got enough fuel? We don't have enough fuel for the end of the race, and that's the risk we took, so. We'll see how it shakes out. All right, we'll be watching Trent Owens calling the shots today for Justin Haley. Weather systems are popping up all around this racetrack. I'm telling my driver, every lap is the white flag. I'm telling you, it's so close to turn one. It's right behind me. It ain't even a mile. Three of the top four drivers that have to win to get into the playoffs. Haley, Almirola, and Busher all up front. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico as we go back to Green Flag Racing. 26 laps to go. Haley out front says he doesn't have enough fuel. He is banking on the fact that there is going to be inclement weather that's going to halt this race. Big push right there to add Eric Amarola. I thought he was going to turn left and try to get underneath Haley, but he stayed behind him. Haley is really being defensive with that lead. Saw that calls trouble the, the last restart. The 10, a little upset off the nose of the 17. Big push is Suarez making that inside line work, but Haley jumps down there and he covers it up. Outside tries to regroup here. Chase Elliott pushing Busher, Busher pushing Almirola. As Haley leads on bottom left, look at two points, Truex to Blaney. Blaney can't really go anywhere, but Truex is in the middle of his pack. Oh, the 99 makes a move. Daniel Suarez to the outside of the 31 for the lead off of turn two. Got Look, help from the, the Toyotas, 10. The Toyota's behind him. He was in the back of Kirk, Kirk, Kyle Busch almost spun him out. Haley right in front of that inside line. Now it's Suarez's turn. When will he dive to the bottom? He's got the 10 pushing him out front. Eric Alvarola. He needs a win to make it into the playoffs. Eric can't do anything by himself. He's hoping to pick up somebody from behind. Now he's got the 31 car of Haley. In the sunshine and out the windshield, these drivers see the ominous clouds coming here to Daytona. Hamlin jumps in front of that outside line. So does the 18. So does the 31. Big push from the 11 to the 18. 18 to the bottom. 31 goes down to block. Amarola went to block him. Now the four have separated themselves. Haley moves to the outside of that 10 of Alvarola. Can't quite clear him. Now it's three wide per second. And Denny Hamlin on that bottom lane. Now you got a very fast car on the bottom. What's he going to do? Jumps to the outside of Suarez. The second team of Butcher goes with him. He wants the lead. Hamlin now on the outside. Hibbert in the 16, up into the top of the, in the top three there, finding a little hole. Right behind Denny. Side by side for the lead. Suarez on the inside, Hamlin on the outside. Haley on that outside line, top of three. He's got some help with him. My God, oh, we did well to go. The 11 now also caught up in it. The whole Haley. The three of Austin Dillon squeezes through. He is in front. And look at virtually the only car to clear it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That, I've never seen racing that intense in Daytona. Never. And Martin Truex Jr. is going to gain some spots here. So many that won't be able to continue. The last caution, the three was Rick. As the three pass and it's starting it is, to rain. It is oh my raining gosh. right here. The heavy rain has moved over the grandstands as we sat here looking out the window. We are the leader. Being clear. My goodness, Austin Dillon. Oh my God. There's his dad. Oh my gosh. We have to remember. We're going to tell me we're the leader now. It's only 1230. 
in the afternoon here at Daytona. Don't get ahead of yourself, Rick. But the cells have <laughs> popped up with 22 laps to go. Richard Childress, team RC. owner there. What a year it'd be if RC gets both cars in the playoffs after a year ago. The battle trying to get them in. Look at that radar. Yeah, you see the weather cells that are starting to pop up now, and that's typical for this part of Florida. I mean, there were, uh, I'll tell you how it started, but it's like four or five things happening all at once. We, when we pick it up, you've got two or three cars sideways from multiple types of contact. I was with you, and when we started there, I saw two cars sideways. I think we're going to try it a little bit earlier. Let's take a look from the three right here. I want to know how he gets through it, because he's the only one on the apron. Still three bottom. Stay bottom, stay bottom, keep coming, keep coming. Way bottom, easy, easy, bottom, bottom, bottom. Good, keep coming, keep coming. Roll. Camera's pretty clear. Let's watch this right here. The 17 of Busher trying to go into the middle there on the 31, on the 16. Oh, the, the 99 just loses it, Denny Rex. Well, the 31 just lost it too by itself yeah. in that top lane. I wonder if it was yes. Reed. Well, yeah, I mean, both leaders are in clean air and they yeah. both catch their car. That yeah. tells me that there's something down there that's reducing grip. Oh my gosh. Yeah, guys, there were a lot of drivers saying, hey, it's raining, why are we racing right now? And that could have been the result of what happened there. Watch this 31, right? Watch him, he's is, is a clear indicator, inside lane, very top. All right, as they roll through here, See right there, he's sideways. Yeah. The 11 sideways. The track three. is wet. Parker. And Jeff, exactly. His spotter was telling him it's raining, and then after that all went down, Justin Haley came on the radio and said it was raining. So, of course, there was no grip down there. The three with 16th going into that wreck. Now, that makes sense, Dale, because all three cars, the first car bottom, first car middle, first car top, you nope. see the rain falling. They all go down in the corner, and all three lose grip. They're the first ones in there. And we don't know if these guys have grip. The 47 has no grip because he's seven feet in the air. And the three gets to the apron. And it's such a, you know, it's oh, such a tough call. I mean, we're, you can't tell it's raining down there. We're, 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 you know, we're right here next to the NASCAR tower. I know they have spotters out there, but obviously it came really quick. Down, mid, 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 down. Like, look at this right here. I mean, so Dale, you and I, the first replay, we were like, we don't know what possibly happened. And look at the three at the bottom, that greenish, tealish, and black car sneaking through. It was the whole front of the field. So fast. Everything's fine, and then they drive right into that shower. It, it wasn't raining on yeah. the short shoot heading to turn no. one. None of these guys had any any idea. So many cars collected. And again, the three shoots through from down on the apron. So two drivers that had a shot win this race, they move into the next round of the playoffs, but on top of that, get their first win as cup drivers. Check this out. Look at Ty Dillon in the 42, Harrison Burton in the 21. It looks like the C's are gonna part, but Ty got loose and they made contact. They were in the best spot to get through this, but the track was wet and Ty just couldn't keep the car underneath him. So, We've seen this. Let's just watch this all the way through, right? The three of Austin Dillon. Here's Still the three bottoms. Wreck it. Stay bottom. Stay bottom. Keep coming. In front of the 21 dead side. Stay bottom. On the easy, easy. Bottom, bottom. 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 Good. Keep, keep coming. Keep coming. I'm imagining that the driver doesn't have time to listen to the spotter. Stay ahead, everybody. That's a pure reaction at that point. That is crazy. The 21 of Harrison Burton. The 42. You mentioned it. Bad brakes for those, Jeff. But. There had to be a moment where that three car had to think he was hitting that 21 sideways on the apron. And now these cars are all riding around. Some of these cars that got in that wreck, they're all riding around with, with flat tires, with wrecked race cars, but they were they couldn't hit. They just had to keep going around. Here because if this the race rain. is over, then here's, you're going to be scored where you finish right here. Yeah, here comes the rain now. It is a heavy downpour that is coming right now. And they'll pull on to pit road and red flag this race. 
with 21 laps to go. And what do you do? I mean, if it, you know, you can't throw the yellow because it might rain. You know, you I don't know what else you can do in that situation. You can't have an official every 50 feet around this racetrack waiting on a pop, you know, a shower to pop up. That's just an unfortunate situation that I don't see how else we could have avoided. And we saw it earlier in the race. There was a light shower in one and two, but it didn't affect them to the degree that it did just now. You know, you can't call it based on how hard it's raining at that time. It's got to be something that is you know, decisive. And right now, that was not decisive in turn one and two. This, what we're seeing right now, is very decisive. I, I want to applaud NASCAR and the track. I think even I, when the rains came down, looked around and said, man, well, this is what a, it's crazy. The radar looks awful. But this is the moment, right? This is race 26. We run an entire regular season. The fans have come out. I know we had a rain delay and are racing on the next day, but it's not Monday. It's still Sunday. It was a Saturday night race. You know, if, if, if you have a elimination game in baseball, you want to play nine innings. You don't want it to be called at seven just because it's official. Well, this is the final elimination race in my mind of the regular season. It will eliminate cars from the playoffs or chances to enter the playoffs. So I'm really thankful we're going to get a chance to see these final 21 laps. It'd be great that it started at 10 a.m. this morning because they yeah. had time to get out there, dry the track after the rain and the inclement weather went through. And so now the sun beating down on this racetrack once again as they're doing some final touches to the racetrack. As soon as the cars roll, they'll come down pit road and they'll dry the area where the cars have been sitting. I haven't ruled out Truex. Why can't Truex? I know that fender looks bad, and I don't think you can lead a line lap after lap after lap. But Jeff, you know, if you're in the picture coming to the start finish line and they start beating and banging, Dale, you said at the top of the show, right? The big push, the chaos every time we see them finish one of these races. I think that car could poke out and lead for a few hundred feet if needed. Yeah, I certainly think that we're going to see some intense action, even with the limited cars that we have. These guys all feel like, hey, man, it's opened up an opportunity for me that I, I didn't really think I had to win this race. Marty. Rick Jr. made mention of this on social media during the three hour rain delay. Pit road looks so odd. There's so many packed up pit boxes and then you kind of stroll down a little further down pit road. Then there'll be an open pit box where there's a crew ready to pit their car here in a moment. Steve, it looks very unusual, almost like it does during the duels, you know, where there's all these open pit stalls, right? Where all the crews have packed up already. They're on the way home back to Charlotte, North Carolina. But the teams who are still working today, they're here ready to go for these final 21 laps. Well, you mentioned the duels as we see right here from our pit. I think it's the duels is kind of what I'm getting ready to see here. The duels are the shootout. You know, we make a lot of those in February and talk about how well it's a smaller field, but now here, you know, these guys are going to have to draft within this smaller field, and it's going to take a different mindset, Junior. You know, it's not going to have 30 cars out there. I think at the front of the field, you're going to have to work harder to, to get the runs you need without all the cars involved. One car comes right to the pit stall. Yeah, so I think NASCAR is going to look at that. This might be pitting with the road closed. Yep. Yeah. So that doesn't mean it's legal, right? It, there still may be a penalty. Maybe these teams just understand what the penalty is, right? If it's a tail end. Got to start at the back of the 20-car yeah, exactly. field. Yeah. I mean, if I had an issue I needed to adjust, I would jump on it as soon as possible. We see that with the 21 now, 48, 62, a bunch of cars. Parker. I just want to point something out as we look at Noah Gregson here on pit road doing some fixes. Also the 43 of Eric Jones. And that's about the two of Austin Cindric who won the Daytona 500 earlier this year. You know, he has a pretty clean car and I think his biggest fan might be his team Penske teammate Ryan Blaney considering if he is able to go up there and be a winner here and be a repeat winner that might just help Ryan Blaney get into the playoffs. And Austin knows that the team has instructed him throughout the race about that situation even before about three or four hours ago. One of the restarts he was in instructed that they needed a repeat winner after what had happened to the 12. So he fully knows what's at stake for his Team Penske teammate, Dave. So one of the very smallest teams in NASCAR Cup Series racing is Beard Motorsports. They only compete a couple of times each year. In fact, this year, one employee, Darren Shaw, he is the only employee for Beard Motorsports, uh, received and put together this car, made the Daytona 500 with this driver, Noah Gregson, and that car is still in one piece on the lead lap. And we know Noah 
majorly, mainly from the Xfinity series. He is not afraid to race up front at these uh, plate races, and so we'll see what they do. A little work there on the front end, just making sure everything is square and ready to go for Noah Gregson. Marty? So one of the things that's clearly becoming an issue here early is when do you fix your damage? Look at Ty Dillon dog tracking right there. So, Steve, their plan right now is they wanted to do a lap at speed, but there's no way they're going to be able to make that happen. They have to fix that left rear damage. Originally, they were like, can you make a lap at speed, reset the damage vehicle policy clock for us? And clearly, uh, Ty saying, I cannot do that. I've got to come to pit road right now. That left rear damage is too bad. Yeah, so basically, you're allowed six minutes, but that six minutes just is in your pit box. That starts when you enter pit road. It ends when you exit pit road, and it totals every time you come down pit road, unless you run minimum speed, which is about a 55-second lap here in Daytona. This car uh, is impossible for this car to run speed. Now, the good thing is the DVP hasn't started. He still has all six minutes. Uh, so that's the most important part right here. We're going to see Ty come to pit road and, and change that tow link that we showed you in the animation on our Toyota virtual car. So right there is when the clock started. Yeah, right? over that yellow line. So now he has six minutes. You got to be very careful. You can waste a lot of other time with penalties, two ex extra guys, things like that. Parker. You see the 18 of Kyle Busch here. He and I were examining his car under the uh, red flag there, looking as you look at those two guys at the front. They're going through sort of the inlet to the engine. What was happening, what had happened from his damage there was it sort of caved in and sort of created just a very small opening to get air to that engine. So I think the team is going in there and trying to see if they can expand that so they can get some air because otherwise he said the suspension is straight, Marty. Ty Dillon is here. He shut off the engine. He didn't really have control of the car. He is way too close to the wall. It took a while to get the car jacked all the way up. They're going to put it on jack stand. Steve, it's just three bolts. And I can't imagine what you crew chiefs do in the three hours as you game plan this and kind of run through this scenario. Hey, when we get this fixed, here's what we're going to do. So they're trying to get this fixed before that DVP, DVP clock runs out for Ty Dillon. Yeah, I mean, this is something these teams practice now. This is a part that everybody knows has become the weak link in the suspension. Uh, so you practice the changing. You see Harrison Burton at the top. Pretty heavy work happening on the left front on this car. Uh, that 18 car. So, you know, we used to talk about, hey, we need to cut that area in the nose out to get some more cooling. It's more than just cooling for these cars. Remember, the air that physically goes into the engine through uh, the throttle body, that doesn't happen at the base of the windshield anymore. It happens through the nose. So, you know, it, it's cooling and power. If that gets shut off, you starve the engine for clean, fresh air. Uh, that'll kill your horsepower. I guess I'm a little bit curious about the cars that just went straight to their pit stalls. When did the clock start for them? Because that clock always normally is triggered by when you come onto pit road. I'm sure NASCAR knows the rolling time from their pit box to the yellow. They'll just add it to it. They'll let the teams know, hey, you know, there's a 20 second or 25 second addition to your clock. Um, I don't I would be shocked if they found an advantage by turning left. As a matter of fact, when uh, Scott Miller was over here during the rain delay, he had mentioned that that he expected the teams to have to rejoin. So there's definitely going to be some time lost going straight to the box. Let's take a look at the day for two drivers, starting off with Brian Blaney, exactly everything he's been through. Obviously, this first wreck gets in the back of the 11 car, 20 cross the racetrack. That's where he got that heavy damage. We thought it KO'd this car, taking Blaney out of the race entirely. They've been able to work really, watch the safer barrier give a little bit right there. But they've been able to fix this car. He's soldiered around with this type of damage all day long. And you can see right here, more wrecks. See Martin Truex Jr. getting some contact. Involved in that wreck. He was able to carry on. See that right front tire, it blew, destroyed that right front fender. Austin Dillon came out the center of this. Started raining when they entered turn one. Had no idea rain was there. Huge wreck. Austin Dillon, see on the bottom? Slides through it. We're now he's stay bottom, stay bottom, keep coming, keep coming. Way bottom, easy, easy, spot bottom, bottom. Field came back by just now. A lot of cars back to pit road for different types of service. And you see the work continues there, Steve, on yeah. the 42. Sorry, didn't mean to step on you there. The 42, three minutes left in their crash clock. I was going to let you guys know over there, the 21 of Harrison Burton, unfortunately, his crash clock has expired. So he is no longer going to be allowed to join the race. So that's one of those guys that needed to win. He doesn't have a chance. It's 42, though, three minutes to go. I think these guys right here are just trying to repair it now, maybe just drive it back to the garage. Good work. There, there's the DVP clock, two minutes of climb. And remember, that's his out to this yellow line. So as he pulls forward, 
This clock should, it won't erase, it just pauses. It pauses at the yellow line. And he did and not get that fixed. Yeah. So it must not be a, a tow link. It's maybe an issue with the upper control arm on that car. So now the strategy, right? So now the strategy is there's no way to get rid of that two minute clock until you go out here and run a 55 second lap. So the question is, as we see that car go around uh, turn one sideways, I'm not sure if that's possible, Marty. Oh, and look at all that smoke as well. That's uh, Speedy Dry on the racetrack. But yeah, they uh, they kind of called it off the work on the 42 car, sent him back on the track, but it is not tracking straight. So the theory here is they do want to try and make minimum speed. Meanwhile, the first car one lap down is Bubba Wallace, team owner Michael Jordan, still here in Daytona. He could have easily left during that three hour rain delay. Denny Hamlin sitting right beside Michael Jordan because he is out of this race. So interesting that both of the team owners here for Bubba Wallace are cheering him on. One lap down, currently the first car one lap down in 12th. Game not over yet for Bubba Wallace in 23-11 racing. By the way, this is going to be the first time in the history of 23-11 that both of the owners are sitting on the pit box at the end of a race. <laughs> Probably they the last they hope, time. Yeah, they hope it's the last time for a while. <laughs> as long as Denny Hamlin's years. driving. Denny Hamlin uh, involved in the wreck, so he is going to watch the end of this one from the pit box next to MJ. The running order and the cars on the lead lap. Austin Dillon, Austin Sendrick, Ware, Truex Jr., Castle, Reagan, McLeod. McLeod's going to move up, and Kyle Busch will be behind him. And it's Reddick, Reagan, Gregson. A lap down is Bubba Wallace, Eric Jones, Ty Dillon. Uh, those are the 13 right now. Harrison Burton's going to drop down the list. Two laps down, Joey Logano. And the cars are two by two as we get ready for the restart from here at Daytona. Parker. One of those cars in the top five is the 77 Landon Castle. Very clean car, too. The team, when I talked to Mother Red Flag, said, you know, we don't know if we've got the speed to lead a line, but if we can just be in position with a clean car come the last few laps, maybe it just falls in our hands. And Landon told me that's most likely his plan to just try to be there with the right car, maybe find some other clean cars, as many as are left, draft to them, and hopefully be in that position to take advantage on that last lap. So we'll see if the 77 can pull it off. And with only a few cars left on the racetrack, you got to look at who your friends are. So we know Cindric is not going to be out there trying to help Austin Dillon win this race. He's not going to do that because that will hurt his teammate, Brian Blaney where Truex may be Austin Dillon's best friend on the racetrack. Should they be able to get together anyway, somehow Truex needs to try to help Austin Dillon try to win this race. We also got to keep an eye on the 12 car Blaney as he rises through the standings as he passes all of these cars that have been knocked out of this race. That's going to be a key, key factor in how many points he can gain over Truex through the last final laps. Yeah, because I see 11. I see 11 yeah. in the next six gonna, laps are going to come his way. It's going to be real close. Truex has, has to have a good top five finish if Austin Dillon were to win. Truex needs to be right there in the picture. Yeah, that's assuming more cars don't get eliminated. Mm -hmm. They're get a wreck and eliminate some more cars. Here they come off of turn four, and it will be 16 laps remaining in the regular season. And again, the prestige and the memories and moments of possibly winning at Daytona right here for this 20 car field as they come back to the green flag. Back to racing here at Daytona. Turex pushing this two car. Why not help this two car go out there and win this race? He's already got a win, already locked in. A lot of dust from the speedy drive. Austin Dillon just did not have any good help behind him, so he's lost the lead. Side by side there with B.J. McLeod for third position. Bubba Wallace gets into the back of the 78 car. And Bubba's got damage, so he probably doesn't have a ton of speed, probably not a great pusher. This is what's going to happen here for a little while, while these cars that have been partially wrecked kind of sort themselves out. Austin back to the top of the 19 car here. He's got to run around Truex. He's got Castle following him right there in third position. 
Truex with that torn up right front fender. Probably not a great car to be leading any line. Probably wants to be following somebody. Continues to drop back off the nose of that 18 car. Cedric into the lead, Austin Dillon right on his back bumper. Again, with a driver that has already won out in front, that puts Truex and Blaney both back into the playoff picture. As soon as Austin Dillon were to have a run, he needs to make, he needs to make the move because this field is going to get scattered apart. There's not going to be a whole lot of help. So if he gets a run on him, he cannot wait. He needs to make it happen now. Four cars trying to break away now. As the three continues to push that two of Cindric. Just right up the back bumper there, Jeff. Pushes him down the front straightaway, continuing to try to make this a two, three car race. I agree with you, as you lose cars in the draft, the ability to get energy enough to drive up to the back bumper and car kind of goes away. His teammate back with there on the outside lane, the first car two too wide. wide, that's his teammate, but just too far behind to do any, giving him any help. Parker. Right, and I think that's what RCR is hoping for. They were letting Austin know on the radio where the aid of Tyler Reddick was and if he was gaining to get closer there because he could be the key to allowing that three car some help if he can get up there. He has that right front damage, but if he could get in the draft be able to push that three, it could be a big game changer, but he's losing a lot of ground right now. I will say is this four cars that broke away, Austin is able to still get to that back bumper of Cindric. Will he continue to be able to have that ability as these laps wind down? And does he have the confidence that if he makes the move, Land the Castle will go with him? That's the other question. Will, where, where's the help going to come from? Truex isn't going to help him. Yeah, that's the issue, right? Truex does not want a new winner. So there will be no help from Truex if he jumps to the outside. But it, would it come from the 77? Well, we mentioned there was points available for Blaney. And, all, and, you know, he's gaining points on Truex. Even though Truex isn't moving, it's now only five points between Truex and Blaney. It's not a big deal if Austin Cindric wins. It's really a bigger issue if Dylan wins. And now behind this pack right here, Kyle Busch, they've gotten single file a little bit better. Kyle Busch is leading it, though, and his car is damaged. The front of his car is not like it needs to be. So it's not who you won't lead that inside line. He just doesn't have the speed. So Dragson's jumped out on the outside of where here. And that 62 car, he's got some help from behind him. Getting a big shove from the eight car of Reddick down the back straightaway. And that's going to push Noah clear. Now can Noah fall down in line in front of that 18 car, maybe pull this whole line up to the back of that 19 of Truex in fourth? He's trying to stay in that top lane because Reddick helped him. So he's trying to stay in that top lane to give Reddick a draft, and it worked. Reddick is clear of Bush. All right, let's listen in to the three radio of Austin Dillon. Make sure that he takes the white before he makes the move. Plenty of time to make your move. Stay patient here. Try to wait for the white stuff so he's with us. That's from Richard Childress right there, giving an information on when to make that move. I mean, I, I, the problem with waiting is if you take the white and a caution comes out and they, it's, you're locked in. Like, you don't race back to the flag. So I get really nervous about waiting to the white flag to make a move. Also, what if you don't get that run? You got the run right there, right up to the back bumper. What if you don't get that run that last lap? There's a little bit of help coming to this pack. There you go. Noah Gregson in that black and white car. Noah's oh. going to the outside of the 19 here. Not going to stay in line. Noah says, hey, I got a few laps left. I got to make the move now. I'm not in position where I want to be. Gonna get to the outside. He's trying to get the outside of the 77 there. Castle with a block. Good job by Castle. Now Truex, he's got to work hard here to stay in this draft. Once they get, if they clear him with the damage to his car, he might lose the draft of this front pack. Those points matter. Now Truex, two points over Blaney once again. Yeah, see if we have him a new winner. Yeah, it's your point, the, the other point to make right here. Now. The other point to make right here is behind, behind Cindric, four Chevrolets. And two, two of them are teammates, the three and the eight. Cedric is absolutely outnumbered here. Cedric, the winner of the Daytona 500 to start the season from Gregson. right here at this track. Gregson is not going to stay put right there. He's trying everything he can to get around Castle. 
And whenever they, whenever they move like that, that helps. That helps that uh, the car sitting there running, falling back. That 19 car. If they get side by side, then it creates a bigger wake, and then he can run up into it. Here comes Castle again to the inside. Now he's alongside the 77 for third place. The leaders are going to drop down and try to block this run from the 62. Castle goes to the back here. Yeah, shuffled the 77 out the back. He's going to try to hang on in this four-car field up front. And the 19 dropping further back. Dave. Rick trying to hang with this group now and find some pace to get back up there. Right before he hopped into the car, Martin Turek Jr. told me the damage on the right front is not great. It doesn't drive very well, but I'm worried about the left rear. You can see the fender poking out just a little bit. It says like a parachute, and that may be the biggest issue that he's dealing with now. And basically, Blaney, I don't believe, can catch another car. He's two laps behind the next position. Turex one point in front of Blaney. Now the point to make about the top four now, we know that Noah pretty much wasn't willing to stay in line, but now he's in between two teammates. If he makes a move, the eight likely is going where the three is. So Noah's sort of limited on options now when he gets a run or an opportunity. He's probably more likely gonna stay in line knowing that the eight car will not commit to any move he makes. Well, and that makes, that makes making a move even sooner. I, I think, I think if you're Austin Dillon, I, if you got to run, you got to take it. I just don't, I, it just makes me really nervous waiting for the last lap. The way things are developed now with Austin and who he has behind him, I'm with you. Go ahead, you got all these guys, they're gonna go with you. You're gonna have help when you get the opportunity, go for it. Guys at 43, top of the screen, goes to the garage, why does it matter? This 19 of Trex will catch him on the white flag lap and scoring that will tie Truex and Blaney in their current situation. That is going to be crazy. If Dylan wins the race, then Truex and Blaney would be tied. Blaney, I believe, would get the tiebreaker between the two as the best finish, but then it's going to come right down to the last few laps. And if you're Truex, I mean, I'm sure everybody's thinking, hey, man, pass the 77 if you can. But I think if Truex passes the 77, he slows them both down, allows more cars to run them down, allows Truex to lose possibly more positions from them cars oh. behind them. Wow, Truex is pushing. Castle almost spun him out into one. It's the only thing he can do. Oh, we got a car on the wall, the right in front of the 41. It's blown. He gets down on the apron. Quickly to the apron, we'll see if a caution. Four, yeah, blue part, coming to you. Right front gone on Cole Custer's number 41. Green flag still out. And that might be a point for Blaney. Custer scored in front of Blaney. We'll just have to see if the scoring goes around or if Custer could continue to run laps. This is gonna be very, very close. And remember, all those points only matter if Austin Dillon wins the race. He's the only one at the front now that would be a new winner inside the top 30. Gregson would be a new winner, but not eligible for the playoffs. Those cars behind Truex are running him down. David Reagan, Ware, McLeod, they're all catching the 19 car. It would be in their best interest to hook up with the 19 car and make their line longer and try to run the lead pack down. Yeah, to Jeff, the inside. There just might not be enough time, though, as we're coming up on four inside. laps to go here at Daytona. Truex is losing 22. positions at a quick rate right now. This whole line likely to go by him. He's going to try to block too late. Can't get in there and make it happen. You know the 22 is going to try to get around him. Now, four laps to go. If you're Truex, all you can do now is hope. All you can do now is hope that Austin Dillon does not win this race. Sorry, it's not like it do. Yeah, yep. can do. We know, man, just keep pushing here. Hopefully they have some issues up front. As they run, both Blaney and Truex would be in. And that second pack is a half a second faster than the leaders. And with four to go, uh, two seconds behind, it is going to be close. They should catch him right around the white flag lap, especially if we get too wide up here at the front. The four car pack that had separated themselves. We'll see if they can stay up there. But it's Cindric who is leading that pack. Austin Dillon looking for a win to get into the playoffs. Running second, Noah Gregson and Tyler Reddick, the top four. See right there, the three car of Austin Dillon. He's starting to fall back from that two car, trying to generate a run, trying to find it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The two almost spins out down into turn one. An issue for the two. He catches it. But 
Now the three out front and the rest of the field trying to reel them back in. And the issue was the three in the back of him getting into the corner. He fell back and got a big run. So he had this forward momentum, gets into the back of him, enter in turn one, knocks centered sideways, and then takes the lead. Well, now what a save. Way. If we go back to the lead, it's crazy. They're so tight up front. The three leading the eight and second. Can they defend? So, and he's got his teammate. So now Austin Dillon's got his teammate Redick behind him. He's got a blocker. Essentially, that's what he's got. So Castle, Noah Gregson, Reagan in the 15, Cody Ware, they've got to develop a plan here. They've got to find a way to do exactly what Austin Dillon did just a lap ago. Fall back a little bit, get a forward run, and then make an aggressive move to try to get alongside. So one back eight, one back after that, all single five. Down the back straightaway. There's a move right there. A lot of cars moving around trying to figure out something. Right now, nobody, the two car back there trying to make a move. Here comes David Reagan to the outside of Noah Gragson. He's going to have some help. Cody Ware up there with him, the two car as well. They're going to be side by side here for just a moment, though. That's going to take a little energy away. Now they're clear. Now what do they do? Where's the smooth? There we go, to the outside. Noah got blocked by the 77. Now a big push coming. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Austin Dillon out in front. He could be the guy who wins his way into the playoffs in the final race of the regular season. He has his teammate, Tyler Reddick, who's locked into the playoffs already, right behind him. Less than a half a lap to go. Cody Ware running in that third spot. Here comes Cindric in the two, keep an eye on him. I don't know if he has enough time. And he doesn't have help anymore. It has dropped off as they come out of turn number four. Martin Trex Jr. trying to bite back up there to get in at points, but it's Austin Dillon who wins in Daytona. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, baby. Yes! Yes, sir, that's what I'm talking about. You are the man, buddy. Very silly, I'm sorry. Martin Tricks Jr. missing the playoffs by three points. And the parting gift for Tyler Reddick, the RCR, is helping Austin Dillon in those last few laps. Yeah, great job, man. Cedric is not going to be happy with Dylan. Yeah, that was, you know, that was a good save by the two car. I'd be upset too getting turned into the corner like that, but incredible save. What you do when you're trying to make the playoffs and win at Daytona. You push that two out of the way. Took the lead back again. And that gives him the opportunity to do this. Celebrate at Daytona again. I believe that that's just where you're going to sit for a while. They're all sitting. Oh, good job. Gets it out. to the playoffs is what Austin Dillon knew at the beginning of the day his goal had to be and after the rain delay he comes out and finishes the job imagine sitting there for three hours and 19 minutes that's how long the red flag was when you're out front and then coming out and racing the final 20 laps at Daytona, and he gets the win and the spot in the playoffs, Marty. Woo! Austin Dillon, welcome to the playoffs. More gratifying to do it this way by racing for it versus the rain. 
100%. Uh, crazy faith. My wife was in there. I, I told her she was dancing in the rain. I said, I got upset. I said, don't be doing that. She said, Lord, she said, when you have faith like me, you don't have to worry about it. I was like, okay, okay, I got you, baby. <laughs> um, but Ace was back there with me. We were watching Paw Patrol, watching the Carolina Cowboys win the PBR event. They said, hey, go get ready. So we, we stayed ready, and um, I got to thank my teammate, Tyler Reddick, Brez Tree, Bass Pro Shops, everybody that makes this thing happen now who's been with me since my start. We have so many great partners, Chevrolet, Chevrolet, Chevrolet. Um, man, we're in the playoffs. What will be talked about as the playoffs, also what will be talked about as a move to get the lead. Walk me through going into turn one with Austin Cindric. Yeah, there was a lot going on there. Um, I knew that uh, if we got to the white, I was afraid somebody would – if I waited too long, I was afraid somebody would wreck behind us. So I wanted to go ahead and get the lead. Um, we were able to get it. I had a big run to him. And then I had my teammate, the eight, back there. I knew we were in pretty good shape there to the end. And he did a good job checking up any kind of run. And just a little too much push there and got him loose. And we went going. How hard was it to stay patient there? I know Pop Pop told you on the radio, hey, don't go until the white flag lap. I knew you wanted to go earlier. Yeah, I just felt like I had good teammates in Chevrolet behind me and that if I could get the lead, that they're, the two would not be able to hold on to the draft. Those small packs are, we've done it in practice enough to know that you, you get lose the tail, it's hard to get back to it. How crazy is it that a body of work of a season, Austin, comes down to getting back on the lead lap right before a rainstorm, dodging a wreck, and then making this happen in the final 21 laps? It's crazy. You just never give up um, and have faith. Uh, we had some tough finishes this year, like Charlotte, man. I, I beat myself up over that. I made a good move and just didn't finish it off. Today we finished it off, and I'm so proud of these guys, and I'm glad to be uh, going to victory lane. Here at Daytona, of all places, Austin Dillon gets another win, puts the three in the 2022 playoffs, his fifth playoff appearance, Dave. And Marty, the 19 of Martin Truex will not make the playoffs this year. Martin, you were afraid it would be slow. What did you experience out there? Yeah, just not fast enough to keep up with those guys. You know, we uh, we got the restart we needed and got in a decent spot there. Just uh, couldn't keep up. You know, it's so wide open the whole uh, last run there. So uh, it's a shame it stinks, but uh, you know, just too much damage to have enough speed to do what we needed to do. The margin is three points. That's all it is. Uh, I know it's hard to face now. Yeah, I mean it is. You know, hindsight's always 2020. We uh, we gave away plenty of points throughout the season, but uh, yeah, it is what it is champion Martin Truex Jr. will not get a chance to try to go for that this year. So Austin Dillon, your winner. Austin Dillon, while he celebrates, uh, quite a few that will be disappointed in not being able to take advantage of that opportunity that was in front of them. And Martin Truex Jr. will have to watch from the sidelines, he'll obviously be racing in the final 10 races, but won't be a part of the playoffs to race for that championship. And we, you know, we watched Truex lose a couple spots here late in the race, and but he's he's right. You know, those they lost points other places. You you can look at other races where they could have done something different or had some bad luck, lost them some points. It's a whole, it's you know, it's the bulk of the year to put them in this position to make it or not, and it's a player driver that many in the playoffs didn't want or are glad he's not in it. He's finished top two in four of the last five years in the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. and this team, they find a way to step up in those big moments. And, uh, you know, it's what a shame. Think about that. Three points, three positions in the regular season, three simple positions throughout the whole regular season. It's a whole other ball game. It's just amazing how tight it is. There was coach uh, talking with Martin Shrek Jr. As we see Austin Dillon getting back in behind the wheel. He is going to be heading to the Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane. Celebration. And the driver that can celebrate the fact that he'll be running for a playoff is Ryan Blaney standing by with Parker. Yes, Rick, in just three points over 26 races three positions, Ryan, you're in the playoffs. Yeah, very, we're very fortunate, that's for sure. It uh, was not was not a good day getting going and, uh, you know, getting tore up early and, and at that point, you know, our fate was not really in our hands. All we could do was try to keep working on it and fix it to where we can make laps and, um, you know, thankfully, you know, we were able to you know, get enough cars throughout the wrecks that we kind of just kept moving up and, and we're able to get in. So that's Definitely a lot more stressful than I wanted, 
uh, coming into here, but I just got to give a lot of props to the 12 group, um, you know, for fixing it and sticking with it all day. And that's that's why you do it. You know, your day can start off like that, and you just just stay with it and stay in the game. And uh, it was definitely beneficial for us. So appreciate them. Advance Auto Parts forward. We'll go uh, race for a championship. Just quickly, what were the emotions like this week? From you know knowing what you had to do to get in this race, being in the wreck, being six laps down, and seeing it all unfold there in those last 20 laps. What is that like through this time? Yeah, really well just throughout the race you know when we got on our wreck so early you know I, you try to stay optimistic you know you never know what can happen um whether it's a new winner or we can still try to beat the 19 on points you know so you, you just try to stay optimistic and in the game and um just not think about the negatives uh, even though it's really easy to think about the negatives it's you try not to so um definitely a roller coaster of emotions and luckily it ended on a high for our group good luck in the playoffs all right thank you And let's take a look at the standings now as we get ready for the first race of the round of 16. That'll be Darlington. And with the playoff points, this is how they're ranked. Again, at the end of the three race run, that round of 16, which will be Bristol, the lowest four in points get eliminated before you start that second round of the playoffs. Yeah, and a win and you automatically advance, right? So if you're Dylan, Bowman, Cindric, Suarez, really Briscoe, anyone on that right half, they need to be thinking scoring points. If you can win a race, that's awesome. That's the golden ticket to move through. Uh, but starting already a chunk behind some of the guys on the left-hand side, you got to start scoring points in those stages. And that really just starts next week with qualify well at Darlington. I mean, it, you don't get a week off to prep. We're just a few days away. And it's really one of the closest point standings we've seen going into the playoffs. No one has really separated themselves except for Chase Elliott. Look at Joey Logano. He's only got 20 points on 16. So it is a very tight point race going into Darlington next week. And by the way, it's Darlington, the Southern 500. We know that's going to be a demanding race. Uh, it always is. You add the pressure of the playoffs on top of it, it makes it that much more difficult. Yeah, a lot of new names in this playoff grid. It's going to be fun to see some of these teams and some of these drivers under conditions. Those are under stressful conditions for the first time. Ross Chastain, Daniel Suarez, several of these guys never been in anything like this. We've been in, it's been an intense season, and that's about to triple going into that first round of the playoffs. Yeah, a lot of people wanting to talk with Martin Trucks Jr. He was the first guy out of the playoffs. Austin Cindric in the playoffs with Parker. Austin Cindric finished third here at Daytona, watching the move right there from Austin Dillon down into turn one, the bump. What happened there? I got hit by another race car going 100. 90, 200 miles an hour. Um, glad I saved it. Glad I had a shot to come back through the field. But um, he's racing for a playoff spot. I totally expect to get drove through. Just kind of a matter of time. But pretty bummed, you know. I mean, we had a shot to win today. Um, Maytag Menard's Ford Mustang was, was obviously quick. We put ourselves in position, not a scratch on it. Just um, <laughs> dang it. How tough was that? You were the only Ford against the sea of Chevys there. I mean, did you know you were a sitting duck? I knew I was a sitting duck. I felt like I was Xfinity racing again, the only Ford out there, you know. But uh, honestly, Reagan saved me a little bit there and was able to work with, with both the RWR cars there to get back up through. And um, one lap longer, I might, might have a shot. I don't know. But um, just frustrating just to be that close. And you, you know that it's just going to come down to, to when are they going to take the run. And I was lifting all the way into the trial. We're trying not to get that gap that big. And they were just backing up to each other, working together as they should. So. Kind of pissed about it, but uh, can't be too upset in the playoffs and have a lot to fight for. Great opportunity. Good effort by Austin Sindri. Well, Steve, after uh, a three-hour rain delay, uh, which we weren't sure exactly what was going to happen with Austin Dillon, he came out and won the race and won a spot into the playoffs. And I think it goes back to as soon as the rain came, he said, I'm not changing my mindset. We're, and every, not even just what he said, but how he said it. When we restart this race, I'll be ready. He stayed in the moment, and it was hard to do. We stood up here, we watched the heavy downpours. We thought it was for sure over. But in the end, I think the fans are the ones that really won. The decision by NASCAR and Daytona International Speedway to dry this place on a Sunday afternoon, didn't matter how many cars were left, didn't matter how many cars were damaged. It took 26 races to set the playoff field. The fans deserved to see it. If it was possible, it was possible, and they got a crazy 21 laps. I thought it was yeah. going to be calmer than that, almost a wreck with Cindric. But in the end, Austin Dillon, RCR, 
two cars in yeah. the playoffs. I would have never thought that at the beginning of the year. Congrats to them. We bring the drivers in, and it was a situation where it was supposed to be a night race at Daytona to end the regular season. It ends up being a morning race that was then delayed, and drivers, it definitely didn't disappoint. Yeah, I kind of love seeing this race throughout the day in the heat, how slick the conditions were and tough they were, but you got to give a hand to Tyler Reddick at the end of that race. A damaged car. He worked really hard in the draft to finally be able to connect with that front group and then put himself in position to help out his teammate Austin Dillon. A lot of controversy or some hurt feelings over how things are going down with the split between Tyler Reddick and RCR. But I think he showed his true colors right there in that fi his final few laps to stay dedicated to his teammate and help him win the race. Yeah, we saw some incredible racing this weekend at Daytona. I agree with Steve. I applaud NASCAR for doing everything they could to get this race going again. The fans deserve to see racing when they can, and they were able to make it happen. And now the playoffs start. Now you got those guys got to reset. Those guys that are racing for a championship, they got to get refocused. And the guys that aren't racing for a championship, they got to find a way to stay engaged. They got to find a way to say, okay, there's still something on the line. It's very difficult to do, Junior. A guy like Martin Truex Jr., he's going to experience that when you're not in those playoffs, you're almost forgotten. And it's very difficult for a guy like that. And it's hard to stay focused, but it's important for them to do it. And I can't wait for next weekend at Darlington. I love Darlington. And then you take and lay the playoffs on top of it. It's just going to be so much excitement and so much pressure and so much fun for us to watch. Well, Rick, you want to know what the playoffs are going to be like? It took 26 weeks. But this was the finish. Martin Trex Jr., that bright orange car right there. One gets out of the way. Three points. Remember, that's what that's three spots on the racetrack. Look right here. One, two, three. I mean, they're in the picture. Three car lengths, basically. Three car lengths, and Martin Truex Jr. perhaps is the driver that advances. Uh, it was this close over 26 weeks. Yeah. Can you imagine what it's going to be like only over three weeks? As, and as the drivers pointed out, you know, that playoff standings is stacked. We have a couple that have a little bit of a head start, but from about sixth to 16th, they are jammed in. And remember, the sport is unique in the sense that all the competitors still continue on throughout the playoffs. That doesn't mean that just 16 drivers are going to be racing week after week in the playoffs. There are still going to be 38 cars, 38 drivers very hungry to get to victory lane, and it starts at Darlington next week. A track that regardless of how fast you are, you can lose 40 points because it will reach out and bite you. You lose a little focus when you run the top of one and two, you overdrive turn three, a lot of trouble spots on that very dangerous racetrack. Well, the celebration is going to be for at least a week for Austin Dillon, who has won his way into the playoffs. It happened here on a very long weekend, an extended weekend for the Cup Series after the race was rained out yesterday. And then another rain delay today. 20 cars restarted with 20 laps to go. And in the end, it was an aggressive move, but Austin Dillon did what he needed to do. And he is a part of the playoffs after winning at Daytona. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.